Hey guys, and welcome to the Gigaboots Podcast. This is episode something or another, and we're going to talk about the Xbox One. But first, let's subtitle this episode, because that's apparently something we do. <laughs> oh no. What? No one you, guys look, you guys look... Uh, <laughs> what are we going to subtitle this one, guys? Uh, okay, now we, we've done we've done ironic, uh-huh. and, and we've done ironically lazy. Yeah, and then and, we've done parodically Japanese. Uh-huh, we've done uh, lazily random. Uh huh. Um, did we do clever that one time? No, <laughs> never. <laughs> we never did clever. Right, that we was the one we kept putting off. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, I'm just gonna call this one X Bone. Are you guys nice. one box? Okay, okay, one box. Yeah, X-bone. one box. X Bone. <laughs> X Bone. One box. Was it the gay sex box? <laughs> flex, flex grip smooth boy. Uh, uh, Have you ever? <laughs> There's this fucking Lipton green teas come in a gallon jug or whatever, and they design a handle that comes off in a weird way and print it on the side when they first came out with this design. Mm-hmm. It says flex grip, smooth bore. <laughs> smooth I thought that was what? one of those like smooth Buck bore. Bender huge names. <laughs> <laughs> smooth pour, okay. I'm smooth. Like, smooth bore. I'm like <laughs> muskets are completely outdated technology for both firearms and, and drinks. <laughs> But, um, yeah, in case you couldn't tell by now, it's <laughs> me, Dan, Dr. Agro, who's giggling, and Bob. And that's it for this podcast. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week. We'll be back next week. With, with more up-to-date news on weaponized green tea. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I guess we'll do the what you're playing section, because, uh, or the what we've been playing section. You, the audience, would not <laughs> no, be able to like, participate. Please, tell us. <laughs> We yell li- loudly into your computer monitor. We're listening. If you believe hard enough, it'll be true. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Aggro, what the fuck are you playing? I've actually been playing a lot of the, the free Neverwinter MMO recently. Oh, yeah? Is that good? It is fun as hell. It's all, it, it, it's very fast paced, very. What Way the, to dodge the question, Aggro. Is it good? No one <laughs> asked if your dumb ass had fun with it. <laughs> but, it looked uh, a lot like Guild Wars. I don't know. Uh, I mean, it, it's obviously going to take a lot of cues from Guild Wars after it came out like Gangbusters like that, but right, um, right. With, with the much smaller uh, button or button selection, like you, mm. you only have five or six abilities on the screen at a time, which honestly, uh, I, I kind of, I don't know if I prefer it over the 28 uh, abilities <laughs> you had in WoW, it's, just, it's a very different thing. Yeah. Right. This yeah. one actually, it, it, it's a trade-off in action orientation versus Guild Wars, where in Guild Wars you're always moving, and this one, it, like in WoW, you stop to attack. But... The weird action trade-off is your cursor is always a reticle in the center of your screen. When you move your mouse, you don't have a cursor. You're moving your camera. And you actually have to have the reticle over an enemy to be targeting it. Huh. Yeah, yeah it, it makes it really fast and really fun. See, I like how everyone started to come out with their own MMO. You know, of course, after mm-hmm. World of Warcraft. So the point at we super accelerated the development of MMO and trying absolutely everything. So now we're at the point with MMOs that we're getting to in some other genres, but not all of them, where it's, we're, we're not improving. We're different. <laughs> we hope you like this type of different. Come on in. Yeah. Try it out. Yeah, j- j- like, like, yeah, yeah I, I think they need that. I yeah. Mean, it's beautiful for the like, genre because especially with these free-to-play MMOs, and MMO being free-to-play is, is the golden rule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. Because now you can get basically your old guild from WoW, who you've gone to a couple different games with. Now, like, oh, we're going to play this for a month. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You, you hear that, Wakana? <laughs> Free to play is awesome. Yeah. And the mic's recording. You can't... I know you're yelling at the monitor right now. Um, in any case. See? You believed. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Good for you. Um, so that's why you've been playing. You also played uh, Bioshock Infinite, is that right? Yes. You really enjoyed I, that? I ate that game in a few days, and I love <laughs> the crap Did, out did of we it. ever put that quick play up? Did, did we? I think we did. Um, the temperatures are so insane in that shed now, right. the Gigaboot shed, that, like, yeah, yeah that's you why can't they're... Yeah, turn that machine on. Like, like, if I render videos, it could very well kill it. We can get dry ice from the Walmart. I've been thinking about, yeah, getting dry ice or just buckets of ice, but to be honest, I've been spending so much on equipment for the <laughs> movie that we're making later this but, year. But that... think about how cyberpunk dry ice cooling <laughs> will make our rig look. <laughs> Pretty goddamn. Yeah. Pretty goddamn, yeah. yeah. Good point. This is that's but I, good I, I think you put the Bioshock one up because I think I watched it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't we know put if we that up. The we website did, then. We didn't. Because I, I hope to God we put it on whatever. Oh, we might not have put it on the website. <laughs> the last. Uh, the last door. No. 
the, Pandora the, the, is Tower. The, the last story of Pandora is Tower, tower XC, us. the game. Um, yeah, no, we didn't put that up. Yeah, I keep waiting for that one. Yeah. So I'll just buy some dry ice next yeah, paycheck. And, <laughs> um, so look forward to that eventually. Please don't mail us dry ice. We have enough weird shit coming in the mail due to <laughs> other engagements we had. Yeah. Yeah. Regrets. It's part of what being an adult means. <laughs> Bob, what do you play? Uh, <laughs> oh, <no>. Kakarot! <laughs> oh. I've been playing a lot of Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. Oh. <laughs> now, is that like Dragon's Dogma 2 Dark Arisen? Or no, 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 no. It no. is. It is. It's a, uh, a expanded. DLC expansion pack that I had to buy the game again for because Capcom made it. Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah, yeah. Yep. Another one of those. Super Street Fighter in me. Dragon's Dogma Dark Resurrection. Yes. yes. Yep. Um, nice. Resurrection. So did, I, I assume that means Eddie Gordo is now in Dragon's Dogma. <sighs> if only. That would be. I would love to to fucking capoeira spin jump kick a Griffin in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and you know who should be stopping you? Not Capcom. <laughs> um. So with that expansion, they added a, a whole new island. Right. Um, and like, I, I'm and, uh, literally asking. I'm not sure. Uh-huh. Does that island run worse than the rest of the game, or better? Is it is it flush experience wise? Yeah, it runs okay. the same. Okay. Cool. Um, Cause I remember there was something weird about it, of like, like there was something just strange about like <laughs> shit will rape you. Welcome to Rape Island. Oh yeah, no, it, the, the, it's designed for after you've beaten the game. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that is, that's it's the just... spike. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like you get off the boat, you're in the starting area of the island. Like what's that? Off in the distance, <laughs> over the screams, you see this black obelisk. <laughs> oh yeah, that. That's, That's the, the spike. spike. <laughs> um, we need to make an RPG. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fucking, uh, what, what What else have you been playing? Is that uh, it? I also picked part? up Dust Ecclesian Tale. Elysian. Elysian. Fuck. Darn it's not it. Castlevania. It, if only it, it, it is, but okay. Okay. Well, it is Castlevania. That's true. Um, but yeah, so, they, that finally came to Steam and, uh. Playing that on a real controller feels nice, because that's why oh, yeah. I didn't buy it on the 360. I wanted the D-pad. You wanted the D-pad. D-pad as a primary input is very aligned with Bob's priorities, so he's glad the PS4 controller has D-pad as the primary input. What game is this? Uh, it's a Metroidvania, made with really good animation and a lot of other stuff made by one dude, and it came out on the 360 last year? Yeah. And yeah. it just hit on Steam. It is pretty what, fucking what nice. Dust, colon, oh, is this, an Elysian Tale. Is this tale. that furry game we quick played? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. yeah. It's the sequel to Dust 514. Okay. Right, I was yeah. trying to like yeah. make that, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, now your EVE Online players can sync up with this Metroidvania game. <laughs> I'll have you know, is that the, the, the furry furries. game we quick played is such a vague descriptor. <laughs> <laughs> We've done 400 quick plays, and so many of those were just Drek. But how many of them have been furry games? Can we count other kin? Stop uh, molesting the XLR cable. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably like, ooh. We can't stop our love. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just, I don't know. Can we count other kin? Because there was that dragon game that was horrible. Dragon that I game. passed out in the middle of. It was an RPG. Yeah. The, oh, the, the God. Two that, hour that's... quick play. <laughs> We just kind of forgot that we could end our own suffering. No, we're almost we're almost at the fun. Why, why did we keep going? You and me, we just kept going. Like maybe maybe it'll start happening soon. Maybe it's like wait, maybe this game's just like this. Wait, could this could this be shit? We didn't want to believe it, but it was true. But it's a sequel to an expansion of the game. Why was that our longest quick play? Um, if you add up all three takes on that weird fairy game. Oh my god. <laughs> we never even got to post one of those, did Yeah, we? because they all had terrible errors. I think two was my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so now what I'm playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, I'm playing PlayStation Mobile games made by Tax, uh, T-A-C-S games. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, I own all of them. Because he's like, eh, okay, I'm gonna, I was going to aim for like like douchebag hipster of yeah i'm playing a game you've probably never heard of it <laughs> but i'm gonna be genuine um he's like as far as i've experienced and seen the only person on playstation mobile turning out quality comment uh content mm. um and it's really cheap it's like a dollar two dollars two and a half dollars and i enjoy the fact i get something to play on my vita that's really cheap and a quality experience even if it's kind of short mm-hmm. like some of these i beat in like two days mm-hmm like and that wasn't hardcore playing if i was hardcore playing it i'd beat it in one day but that's not how i do yeah 
but yeah, they're they're really enjoyable games. Um, uh, my favorite so far is Out of Mind, which is I, I think I showed you the trailer yeah, I've for that. Seen a couple of videos. Yeah, th- my favorite part of that is it seems to be a throwback to a lot of the Amiga platformers and like early PC platformers where people shot lasers out of their stomach <laughs> because that was the center of the character yes. model. <laughs> <laughs> Only it's a fat dude shooting lasers, and there are floating scary faces yelling things about existentialism at him. Well, shit, sign me up. Right? That sounds like the weird stuff I find at Newgrounds at, like, 2 in the morning, like, this game's changing my life. <laughs> <laughs> you have changed my worldview, sir. Thank you. Which I need to look at the PlayStation Mobile Store, because I'll, I'll bet you. It, it, it happened a lot with the minis, where, like, we put, like, hey, we're going to quick play this game. I played this on Newgrounds, like, two years ago. What's yeah. going on? Right. Um, the cool thing that's happening with PlayStation Mobile is uh, they actually made it free. Like, to make PlayStation Mobile games, it's now free. At very hmm. least for the entire summer. You used to have to pay $100 to get the license to make PlayStation Mobile games. And since it's a PC-based development environment, mm-hmm. you don't need any hardware. So, mm-hmm. you go apply, you can get a free license, you can make PlayStation Mobile games. The reason we haven't already started work on our video video game is mm. because I talked to Thomas Hopper, the guy from Tax Games, because it's a one-man outfit, mm. of course. Um, they don't have built-in support for video playback. Mm. So our video video game is on, on hold, or at least in development for other platforms. <laughs> our visual novel is still free game. <laughs> Fair video game. video game coming to uh, CDIs uh, near you. <laughs> Dude, like, here's the thing. I was talking to a coworker, one of my coworkers who's into gaming and shit, about uh, the indie movie we're doing later this year. Mm-hmm. And his way of, like, rationalizing the actual market for that, you see, like, dude, there are people making Atari games right now, selling them on cartridges. <laughs> there is a market for that movie. <laughs> so I'm like, I you know, that's the fucking bizarre shit. I know... Uh, chiptune composers who sell their albums on NES cartridges. Nice. Yeah, it's a really fucking cool place we've gotten to with the internet where it's just like, we're going to make this high quality content in this extremely niche form factor and you just have to yeah. pay me. I like, like people making bit. cartridges as objects as art pieces. I, I think mm-hmm. as we move more into, I mean, we're already in crazy ass, out the ass internet shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but I, I think physical objects as art pieces is becoming more awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people have the resources and the connections and the market to do it. Yeah, and a lot of the people who are involved in these things are actually doing it out of like they love these things. Mm-hmm. It's not just people always looking for like that couldn't be profitable. Let's not do that. Soon like they Capcom want- will start selling their games on cartridges for no reason. <laughs> uh, I forget if it was Mega Man Nine or Mega Man Ten, but one of them had a super limited release on NES. Like, super, like, one or ten copies. That is awesome. That was pretty fucking awesome. Especially if it was nine. Not so much if it was (laughs) ten. Ten was great. Yeah, there were so many memorable songs, like... I love Sheep Man. But in any case, we're out of... I like Sheep Man. (laughs) I'm a a, a Mareep fan, so... Okay. Yeah. You know, Mareep is an anagram for Ampere. Blew your mind. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Blew you. That's what I did. (laughs) I blow your mind! <laughs> and on that note, we're moving to the next section. Hey guys, now we're going to talk about the meeting for the Xbox One reveal. Um, so how do we start this off? I guess we can do broad strokes. Um, TV, 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 sports, 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 TV, NFL, sports, TV. You know, I... I didn't actually know the... Uh, this happens to me sometimes. I, I didn't know that that meeting had happened until I started seeing the jokes pop up on the internet. Yeah. And this is actually the joke I've heard the most often. Oh, it's, it's TV, TV, sports, sports, TV, TV. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Because this is a large part of Microsoft's base, the Xbox install base. Yeah, they're they're pushing their sports connection. And honestly, the TV functionality that I saw was really, really interesting. And I'm just, I'm getting kind of pissed now because all I saw on the internet were, like, leftovers from the last console war still hating with nothing to actually hate over yet. Okay, well, here's the thing. At the core, the next Xbox is a video games console. That is what it is because it's still carrying the Xbox name. That's what it has to be. Had they dropped that, people wouldn't expect the strengths of the system to be played up how good, how well, and how feature-rich it plays video games. And since its actual unveil was neither, like, I keep hearing people rationalize this as it was a hardware showing. 
that was not a hardware showing. The no, PlayStation wasn't. 1 was a hardware showing. We have 8 gigs of GDDR5 RAM and all of these processors and things that are... That is a hardware showing. Mm -hmm. Popping up with the specs... No, they didn't show it, Dan. It wasn't a showing. Oh, that's true. They didn't show the box. Ergo, it doesn't exist. Good job, Internet. You're fucking, sh fucking Sherlock. You cracked this case. PS4's not real. Because, you know, making... I believe it. An integrated... Kaz walks out of the stage at E3, just, it's fake, drops the mic. <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> fucking crackers. <laughs> Japan gets the PS4, it's not for you. <laughs> oh. They decided to, re to, uh, to, to capitalize on how Microsoft seems to be focusing exclusively on an American audience with the next Xbox. Um... And there, that's why the PS4 is Japan only. They they want all 14 million of that massive install base. Massive install base. Okay, so back to the meeting. Um, my problem is that they didn't do enough to say why games are going to be better than it on it than its predecessor. The games they did show were not titles like their. There was that trailer for the Alan Wake studio, which was a uh, Remedy. Yeah, Remedy. Yeah. yeah, they showed the trailer for that. And me and Gerstman, because Gerstman's on Twitter tweeting this as I'm watching the conference, me and him freaked out at the same time. Video, video games! <laughs> yeah! yeah! <laughs> uh -huh. And, you know, I, I want that. I yeah. really do, but that's not what that was. No, no, no. Was that was that just was... a live action trailer for a video game that. And then, then, then a CG video of a boat. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I I love how they kept like guys we we I think the last console war uh, -huh. uh really really taught us a lot as, as an industry and 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 I think what what people need to learn is that yeah you can lie to us and we want you to lie to us but you can't lie to us wholesale like that anymore <laughs> yeah um see that's yeah the those, thing. like those CG trailers for the the UFC and the yeah those didn't look the real sports at all games yeah those were very pre scripted cutscenes mm -hmm. um even if they were in game that's not the same as being in game there are a lot of factors that come into making a game run worse when it's an actual fucking video game and not a goddamn cutscene but even beside that I would like to state that to our audience. And, uh, you know, just have you guys touch on it as well. Um, we are Sony people. Yeah. We were hardcore Sony fan boys at the beginning of this gen. We were lied to completely and utterly <laughs> uh -huh. at 2005's yep. E3. Oh, and that yes. is exactly where we're sitting now with Microsoft. They're like, it doing is, it again. <laughs> they're just doing it again. And it's just sad because there's so many journalists who, for some reason, don't recall what being lied to feels like. I, I, I think that's a lot of why I, I don't seem to hate this showing as much as everyone on the internet seems to. Because we've been there? Yeah, I think it's a matter of expectations. Like, no, this, this I didn't expect anything better out of Microsoft. This is the kind of shit I... And for Microsoft, this was actually kind of straightforward and to the point. Yeah. Um, that That's a good point. Because we do watch every E3 conference. Uh, we have done that every year since 2005. Yeah, since they started broadcasting online. We've yeah, been since, so. since the fall. Since, since the fall of Rome. <laughs> oh, the grandeur and the pageantry and so much money. <laughs> what but, was... but yeah, it's, it's just... It, it, it really annoys me to see these people talking about, well, Microsoft said it would do this. Okay, did you see that? Like, for example, and I know this, isn't, this didn't happen in the meeting. This was something that happened after the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, Microsoft's now saying they can do remote play. And I'm like, there's a lot of tech in the PS4 specifically designed for that. And from what everything they said about the Xbox One, it doesn't seem to have any of that same tech. Hmm. And it's like, okay, what situation did you see it in? Oh, well, we saw it with two consoles wired to each other. Yeah. I'm well, like, I that is that. unbelievably not at all a usage like a case. representative <laughs> said there won't be a problem over, like, we don't expect latency we issues. We don't expect latency issues. That was verbatim, wow. the quote. I, didn't, I like, didn't get this. I didn't see this one. That's fucking crazy, you assholes. The reason Sony bought Gaikai is because it needs an entire company to make that possible. Uh -huh. That insane amount of infrastructure. That insane amount of getting dedicated processors and things to encode that video the parts of the ps4 that are not completely wholesale like tunnel vision focused on playing a video game are focused on doing that encoding stuff mm -hmm. and nothing about the xbox one was unveiled to be about that oh it's, it's got windows it can do that 
Yeah, see, that's why I'm sort of, like, I think that's where the journalists are coming from. No, it can run Windows at the same time as the Microsoft OS. Oh, yeah, I love that. Like, Xbox. It's got, like, your game, and then and then it's got, like, Windows, and then in between is Magic. Yeah, and they kept saying it was, like, a three OS layer. I'm like, guys, fuck. I think the word kernel was used. No. They no, said they, they it's said, running they three OSs. Windows kernel was in there. Yeah, but uh, they said it's just, running three OSs they at did once. Say that too. <laughs> and every single person who knows about OSs and yeah. what that was in the middle is fucking furious because we're just like, that's called a hypervisor, you assholes. Will you just fucking say it? <laughs> no, it's running three OSs. We got three times as many OSs as the PS4. <laughs> Which I think that 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 that's the basic thrust of Xbox's uh, PR message. Yeah. They know what their install base is. And, you know, I honestly, I kind of hate to play to middle school-esque stereotypes here. Uh-huh. But, yeah, they're ex-bros. Yeah. They, they don't, they're not going to care about the same shit that Sony fanboys will. So, yeah, tell them it has three OSs. That, that's cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, that is sort of them capitalizing on what they perceive at least to be a very dumb user base. Mm -hmm. Who's not going to know that sort of thing. Um, getting back to the meeting, getting I, I really think I just applied that all Sony fanboys are smarter than Xbox. <laughs> yeah, which we are in no way are gonna. I mean, admittedly, if they I'll say it, I, I can't back it up. <laughs> if they followed the the three, E threes at least as much as we have now, oh, yeah, they're inherently yeah, smarter because they were lied to, and then that expectation was broken, so they learned. <laughs> <laughs> what was but, uh, about that TV thing that the yeah. Agro is bringing up here? I think that that is highly like deceptive because it requires your cable box to still be hooked to it so it doesn't replace your cable box no right but the, more than that it doesn't have any dvring features yeah they so i'm kind of like that's a way that i use tv that's like the only way i do anymore i don't use tv much noted but yeah like yeah older yeah. people my parents everyone i talk to that has tv they just watch everything on dvr at this point right right the, right. the way it was set up the way they were talking i kept waiting for them to talk about dvr Me stuff too. like i figure maybe somewhere down the line we might start talking about it okay they had like a built-in guide and list two, and shit two quick things one um th afterwards they said something about dvr functionality and which is weird because they didn't say it to every journalist they said something about dvr functionality and then more importantly they said games so there's some game DVR functionality. How in the world it doesn't have dedicated parts for, okay, whatever. We're gonna ignore that for a moment and just put that aside. Number two, and the most important thing in regards to the DVR functionality, huge media companies, the telecom companies hated it when DVRs came out. When TiVo first came out, they sued them into oblivion and then they released their own version. The reason why is they had to release their own version because the market compelled them to and the legal process is so prolonged they didn't know they were going to win. Mm -hmm. So they had to come out with a product that was basically, we can do it because it's our cables. Mm -hmm. You can't do it because you're some weird fuckers. And for whatever reason, that legally flew. Yeah. When negotiating with these telecom companies, which is obvious that Xbox has been doing <laughs> heavily over the last year and a half to two years, like I, so many rumors were coming out about them working with these telecom companies to get this TV feature in. There's not a chance in fucking hell they were able to convince them to let them get these TV features in and allow them to DVR it. Hmm. Like yeah. that is such a thorn in telecom side because telecom is so fucking blind by how large they are now that they don't realize how much they're fucking over their consumers to protect what they see as their IP, their content. So I really don't think Microsoft actually fully negotiated this deal and got DVR functionality through. Mm. I don't expect to see that. No, I just can't wait right. for TV to die anyway. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> I've never paid for television in my entire life. Yeah. And that isn't a hipster thing of like, Psh, TV's boring, man. No, that's a, th it is a pain in the ass. You have to have the DVR in order to see the good stuff. Yeah. And the instead I could pay $7, $6 for Netflix. Yeah, a lot of the good yeah. shit that's on TV is on the internet legally anyway. Right. Yeah. Hulu, Netflix covers most of it. Yeah. You mm -hmm. get those two. You're fucking golden. What are you missing? Right. <laughs> Netflix is making its own shows now. Which is fucking but, amazing because on the PS4, we're going to have Netflix. So it's just going to be absolutely retarded. Like, say I got an Xbox One and a PS4. I'd be using the PS4 because I can fucking Netflix. Well, well Netflix is going to be on the Xbox, Xbox One. Probably. No, but it's it was just... on the tab. It, they showed it. No, It was one of the apps they showed. Yeah, okay. okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> so I don't speak in definite because it's not out, but... Yes, sure. Netflix on there. My point here is they didn't expend a lot of 
engineering know-how and a lot of the budget of the cost of this hardware to build that feature in. The PS4 gets to be a console and do that. And there's no dedicated part to do that thing that I have absolutely no use for. The TV thing is fucking useless because as I've heard people point out, they don't fucking have HDMI on their goddamn DVR anyways. They can't route it into the next box, into the Xbox One. Mm. They don't have an HDMI out. Mm. Yeah, I hear there's some other port they put on there, but it doesn't look like anything that my DVR can output, so... Okay. Yeah. Okay, now that is an interesting problem that I know. Yeah, I like, like, didn't think of this until people with DVRs pointed it out to me, and I'm like, oh, that's a good point. I was disinterested, but now I'm disinterested, and there are problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, 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 so as a conference unveiling the next Xbox, I, I really think their focus on TV was really out of touch. Um, a lot of people, developers-wise, were noting, like, millennials as a generation are way less interested in TV than those before them. Right, I was like, there, a lot of those features with the smart glass and the doing app while watching movie and all that is heavily geared, they said so themselves, towards like the youngest generation possible for buying this. Right. They, and those, that is the generation that does not care at all about television. Yeah, by the time, the point here is they know the second screen experience exists. People who watch things or play things and pull things up on their phone mm -hmm. or their tablet. And they incorporate that into the console, but that's not really the way people who have those devices want to consume that content. We don't want the screen to be smaller so we can have that information on screen and interface with it via voice or closing the game out and doing that. When we could just pull out a smaller device and look at that and then look back up at the screen. The Skype thing, it's completely different. That is fucking awesome. Putting Skype up in the corner and being able to continue playing your game while Skyping that integration is fucking beautiful and makes goddamn sense. I think the other thing they did right was the uh, having matchmaking going on to, on your game and then being able to go watch a movie or something yeah. in the background. That's, yeah, that's pretty that's, cool, that's too. Really interesting. Yeah, that that's, is really neat. I, Though I have never touched it in my life, I almost squeed when they had the live updating of fantasy football stats <laughs> while watching a game. <laughs> that was really cool. It was neat. Either I don't know enough about fantasy football or something to understand exactly if that will come through. Like, because I know with these sorts of things, with Sony in 2005, and even with Microsoft at 2005, there are things they say will happen that don't end up happening exactly. Oh, yeah. So I don't know how fantasy right. football is going to get updated on the fly for... They did make a big deal of their partnership with the NFL yeah, for that, that though. So that's I, I true. think it's going to happen. This is I true. I, now I have to question how long they're going to support it. Yeah, which that's is... the main thing. And, and we can... Now we should stick on the meeting. But I think that's sort of how long are they going to support it is a larger issue for the uh, for activation the thing and the yeah. news games thing. But we'll get to that later. Um, so, what other parts of the meeting were there? There were the few games they showed of Forza, the Remedy game, um... Call of Duty. Call... Dog Edition. Call of Doggy. <laughs> Everybody hating on this dog. He's all, no! He's all adorable. No, see, that's why it's awesome. Because it's retarded as a feature for a game, but he's adorable. Like, that's, <laughs> it's that awesome internet combination of snap zoom to them adjusting a dog's mouth. Like, that's hilarious. <laughs> I've been dying. I, I follow that Twitter account for the Call of Duty dog. Honestly, what, what, I, what I mostly took away from, from that dog segment was, holy shit, the seals tattoo the inside of dog's ears. Right? Was right? that somebody's job? <laughs> that was just Maybe really... Maybe out for it, I guess. <laughs> right? Or something? I don't know. That's Man. their final test. They have to stand still while they take the tattoo in the ear. So I think the, I think the quickest way to get through this game section is sort of say what we each thought of it individually without remarking on the other person's thing. Because otherwise we're going to stay here forever because of the good amount of games. I think. So I'm very quickly going to be like, Forza! It was pretty. It was a trailer it, it for was, Forza. Yeah, it was what pretty. Are you say? It didn't exactly look insanely gorgeous. It wasn't Drive Club levels of like levels of like, oh my god, that's retarded gorgeous. <laughs> Which to me, I'm not a graphics whore, but goddamn, the only way I'm gonna give a shit about a game that's a driving simulator is if it is retardedly gorgeous. Um, moving on to the remedy thing. Yeah, disappointing. It's not a video video game. Definitely. <laughs> Um, retardedly disappointed that it didn't show anything reminiscent of gameplay. Probably won't see that for a while. Oh, maybe about a second. Of like they still like the, of the them guy. flying cameras around an explosion as a guy dives. Oh, like the guy landed and then he like walked toward a thing. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's a, play, a game that is being played, sort of. It's it like is gameplay. A guy in a vest getting shot. Of, like, who put Resident Evil 2 footage in here? <laughs> <laughs> um, and what was the other game? Oh, Call, Call of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty is horrifically disappointing, but I can't really say that knowing who's running Call of Duty now. Like, the oh, original right. people who made Call of Duty I are that fucking... company got gutted. <laughs> yeah, which is why the new Infinity War like, seems Infinity oddly Infinity War. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, like, so over 80% <laughs> of Infinity Ward's staff actually left when yeah, the well, heads they go? did. Uh, EA. Yeah, EA. They have a studio they're making for EA. Um, and respawn. they're making a game. Yeah, Respawn, respawn Entertainment. That was it. Okay. We're probably going to see them at E3 with their new game mm-hmm. um, for next-gen consoles and stuff. All right, possibly an Xbox exclusive. Probably. That's the rumor. Yeah. Oh, um, God. When he came out during the, the Call of Duty thing, and he was like, you know, with DLC, that will always come out first in the Xbox. And I cried a little inside. Uh, see, here's the thing. Um, that was the case on Modern Warfare 2. Like, they had the deal even way back then. And when people told me, like, like the DLC hadn't come out on PS3 yet, people told me they had it on the 360. I'm like, huh? Really? Huh. Weird. <laughs> yeah. And that was the full level of affecting me. It was like, I'll play it when it comes out. Yeah, I mean, That like, doesn't affect me because you haven't given it to other people on my platform. <laughs> yeah, one month of map exclusivity is like, okay, that's a minor road bump. Yeah, it's just enough to be dickish is what right. it is. Yeah, it's not, it, it's, it's not something not, where you'd go buy a console yeah, for it because you know it's, it's coming. It's just childish. It, yeah. it's, it's not cock blocking correctly. It is just knocking on the door while you're having sex. I think that <laughs> idea really boils down what this, this meeting was about. Uh, Microsoft's whole PR push. It, it mm-hmm. It's less informative and more ammunition for the ignorant in the console war. I yeah, mean, oh no, definitely. The specs thing was hands down that. What were you going to say, I Bob? was going to say, uh, Call of Duty, I think that Microsoft has literally convinced a lot of people that they they're, it's only on Xbox. Yeah, that, uh, that is what they do. They do that a lot. With, like, you'll see a commercial for a video game that's cross-platform, yeah. and it'll have the Xbox logo at the end. Mm-hmm. This happens yeah. all the time. Yeah. And, and it's evil. It's true that they... It's brilliant, the, and it's the, evil. By right? rolling out Call of Duty there, even though they said it was on next gen, and they never said... It was exclusively on Xbox. It sh- they showed this on Spike. So undoubtedly, someone watching on Spike thinks that that's now an Xbox One exclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, Which, god damn it, that name is so fucking confusing. That, yeah. that uh, oh. Confusing oh. is a whole other thing. That thing's sinisterly stupid. Like, that is brain-meltingly horrible mm-hmm. as a name. And I own a PlayStation Vita. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That name is I own not... a Wii U. Is that true. is true. Yeah. I didn't think anyone could beat that. I didn't think so. Is this a contest? <laughs> <laughs> like Wii U, that's a thing for the Wii? No, that's a whole new thing. Oh, that's weird. Xbox One, I own that. No, no, you don't. <laughs> Please come back. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, I, I, I think you're right, Agro. This is a whole lot of Microsoft just giving ammunition to fanboys, which is why when they talk about what's in the console, at the meeting, at very least, they just go, it has 5 billion transistors, and it also has 8 gigs of RAM. No, they th- first they have to preface that with, we don't want to talk about how many transistors we have. But we have 5, five billion. billion. That means something. Fucking Tim, who, if there was a producer for Gigaboots, it would be Tim, in my mind. Because <laughs> he gave us the chairs and the table and <laughs> yeah. shit. Um, he was like... I'm just imagining it's a box full of transistors. <laughs> shika, 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 shika. I'm like, yeah. I want to plug it in? It, no. It opens like a cereal box. You just pop open the small side and pour it into your bowl and eat it. <laughs> I, I, I honestly took a moment to wonder whether or not they deceptively and fallaciously just glued a bunch of dead transistors onto a blank side on the inside of the console to pack that number. Well, that's for why no half reason. of it is ventilated. And the other half has transistors glued to it. Um, oh. But yeah, I, I, I am infuriated at this conference and Microsoft uh, to a significant extent because it's obvious that, uh, and I'm going to get this out of the way now, it is a weaker console. For those who haven't put this together yet, the Xbox One is significantly less powerful than the PS4. All of that functionality they built in for the DVR, uh, the extra Windows kernel running on top of it, all of these things are not only going to make it run worse, but it is a less powerful console. We're going to see this at E3, that's going to happen. 
I, I'm not bugged about it being a less powerful console. What I'm bugged about is them not being upfront about that and mm -hmm. them twisting these numbers. Yeah, five billion transistors. And you're gonna hook to the cloud and now this, basically you'll be yeah. magic. We'll, we'll talk about that after the meeting because that's a- powered internet. That's a whole <laughs> yeah. other topic of this is fucking but yeah, stupid. I remember when he said transistors, I immediately snapped back to 2005 when everybody was counting gigaflops and there were like two kinds of gigaflops and everybody was yeah. lying about we that gigaflops. gigaflops and teraflops. <sighs> like the, the best oh. thing, <laughs> okay, everyone listening, this is the best way you can tell that Sony was full of shit in 2005, and they're amazingly honest now. Both years, they said their system had two teraflops in performance. <laughs> <laughs> I was I just I fucking smiled and felt warm and fuzzy on the inside when they said it for the PS4. They're like, it has two teraflops of performance, and I'm like, it'll actually do that this time. <laughs> but yeah, uh just with the Xbox One, they're like, we also have eight gigs of RAM, and they don't mention like, oh, it's it's DDR3 RAM at this clock rate. We have a processor that's custom with a GPU that's also custom. We're not talking about exactly what they do but they do more instructions per cycle than this thing i'm <laughs> um, like oh that's cool what's the performance and apparently it actually came out eventually that it, it, the gpu is like the in, comparing the ps4 to it uh because that makes the number bigger right uh, the ps uh, the xbox 360 is uh the PS4 is 33% more powerful than the Xbox 360. So that is to say the the Xbox... Sorry, Xbox, Xbox One. One. Okay, here's the thing. If I keep switching what I'm calling it, like next box, Xbox 720, that's because my brain will not come to terms <laughs> with that fucking horrible name. I spent two days straight talking about it for hours and calling it next box because I cannot fucking deal with that name. Mm -hmm. In any case, yeah, so that is to say the Xbox One's GPU is two-thirds and the... PS4s is three thirds. The actual numbers is 1.24 teraflops and 1.8 teraflops. Mm. Now, this was something I expected because it's obvious their goal with this machine is not to make the prettiest goddamn games, not make the easiest to develop games, not make the games be able to do something unique or interesting or whatever. They are focusing on the larger entertainment entertainment mm. aspects, but I really fucking wish they would just tell us what the fuck we're getting mm -hmm. instead of being like, we have five billion transistors. The last console they made melted yeah they're not gonna tell us what they're <laughs> selling us yeah I, i'm worried Which about is... both of these consoles <sighs> i mean sony has a really good track record now <laughs> <laughs> yeah how many ps2s we go through i let's see i, I replaced... know about this because i i wasn't plugged into the industry at all during the ps2 yeah and i i've had one my whole life and it still works dude my first one worked absolutely fine the whole time i had it i switched to the second one because the internet was uh the ethernet was built into it it was mm -hmm. the slim like i just wanted a slim because it yeah. takes up less space something that matters to me and you would realize that if you fucking knew anything about your core fucking demographic <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did a coworker. He was just like. He was like, "Why does it matter to people that the Xbox One is larger?" And I'm like, "Fucking Seinfeld! Would you just fucking listen to me for a goddamn second? How many consoles do you have?" And he's like, "One. Why does that matter?" And I'm like, "Because you have one. I have sixteen sitting around. Fuck you." <laughs> I can't even stack things on top of it. Yeah. Because half of it's ventilated, uh -huh. and if I cover that, it'll die, and they'll be like, did you cover if, it? If you've ever walked into a room and, and, and seen a person you've known for years trying to balance a Genesis on top of an FC <laughs> twin... <laughs> <laughs> that desperate... <laughs> Sham, Jay from Hail Zeon. <laughs> But yeah, in any case. What happens when you need to change the cartridge? Well, the jackal's in there, so oh, yeah. Uh, one of the weirder things that happened is they said it had a 500 gigabyte built-in hard drive, and there's obviously no slot for you to take that out, but then they told someone at some point in time you could switch them. No, you, you can't. They told someone oh, at some point in time you could of switch them. Of course they did. This and is then, the big aftermath. And yeah, then, God. And then How were they that disorganized? What they clarified, and they didn't say this at all during the meeting, what they clarified is that you can hook in an external hard drive. Mm. And that'll be able to store your games and run it off. Right. Them. But doesn't that cause some issues with the throughput of going through the external hard drive instead of the well, board? Well, maybe it's a USB 3.0 necessitated hard drive. Because maybe. at that point... Your bandwidth's not going to be that much of an issue based on the connector. It's going to be based on you bought a random fucking hard drive. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so a lot of that has been weird. 
Um, is there anything you guys wanted to touch on for the... Um, I'll just make a quick note while you guys think... Uh, one of the Europeans I heard about talking about the conference, he's like, yeah, um, funny thing. There's nothing in here for us. That is NFL. Uh, football, uh, specifically the NFL, in case you didn't know, is the 10th most popular sport <laughs> in the world. Right. Congratulations right. for taking up a shitload of your conference with some shit that two-thirds of this fucking planet does not remotely give a shit about. Well, is, <laughs> most popular? Yeah. Tenth? I imagine it's like, well, like, well, what, what, like, what's between it and soccer? A lot of shit, apparently. Huh. Yeah, and the I, amount I, I it's played the on top of the amount it's well, televised. I, I, know I bet table baseball. tennis is probably huh? beating it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, with China. population. If we're yeah, doing that, just, yeah, are we doing screwing. like money or viewers? <laughs> They're actually we spend more money on football than most countries have. Yeah, it's true. Which is why we try to not make it GDP based, because <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair. Did you know America's the most popular anything? <laughs> Television, though, that feature isn't going to work in those countries. They've already yeah. said that's only launching in America for, uh, at launch. Yeah, because mm. that's not something you can do, which is why we don't see more things like that, because you need to have a broader strategy for the whole world. You need to have a device that is flexible. And when I think, you, and like the uh, the conference did a bad, clumsy job of uh, trying to put this idea. I, I don't think that function, like they presented as TV is amazing. Which isn't, like, if you look at it as just the function, the, they were trying to show off switching between different applications and putting them into each other seamlessly. But Microsoft can't pace a console, a console, a conference, a conference to save their lives, so it just came off as television is amazing. Buy your game console to watch television. Right. Yeah. Um, see that that <laughs> watch television a movie and order tickets at the same time. What, some asshole. One of those motherfuckers apparently said like my experience involves watching a movie, listening to music, and playing a game at the same time while talking to friends. What, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Why are you doing more than one of these at once? Switching yeah. between them quickly is amazing. I don't want to do them all at once. I would like to note that I, I put TV and it's playback through the three uh, the next the, the Xbox. That thing. Um, <laughs> on par with Xbox, a Xbox. Remote play. <laughs> no, okay, can we call it XB colon Xbox? <laughs> no, we have to call it XB1 colon Xbox One. <laughs> um, not in a million years. In any case. <laughs> but yeah, I put it on the same level as remote play. I have used remote play before, and with mm. the PS4, like, let me rephrase. I put it on the same scale and the same level of importance as remote play in the PS3. Mm. Like, I have used it before, and it's really cool. I played Blaze Blue on my PSP. That was awesome. <laughs> Way more awesome than the d and I was skipping out on to fucking do that, because I'm a brick. <laughs> we played Dragon's Lair on the PSP. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, that was... <laughs> in any case... <laughs> But yeah, I was. It was a great usage case of my PS3 was a nice hill. I set it up, and uh, I was playing from Crestview, which uh, that's a good thirty miles or whatever. And it was it was responsive enough for me to play through the story mode because I'm fucking playing as Iron Tiger, and I'm a fucking cheapest shit asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about me playing a fighting game. Why yeah, am I even just... feeling the need for explaining that? Right. I mean, Everyone it's... in our fan base should know. <laughs> you figure a robot man would be more expensive than that, but no. no. You, these are rock bottom prices. We're dishing out. Fucking these Walmart's games. going out of business. <laughs> these goddamn cross screen two story high bolt tackles. I don't know what. <laughs> what do you mean you're having problems dodging it? Just leave the arena and everything's fine. <laughs> Play top tier, bro. Put the controller down. <laughs> just, just do it. But yeah, so like on the PS3, that was something I did once, maybe three times. Mm -hmm. And that was mostly because it wasn't built into the console better. It didn't have better performance. And yeah, um, the PS4 is going to do that a lot better. So coincidentally, uh, the, the, P the Xbox One's thing of TV is something that in a completely different circumstance than I am currently, I would put it on the same level as, you know, remote play on the PS3. If that's really neat that the console can do that. That should not be the focus of why you're trying to convince me to get the console. Yeah. Like, if they had an entire PS3 ad for remote play, that's the scale of bizarre I put this on. <laughs> of just like, guys, that doesn't work well. They, they did. <laughs> what? Yeah. They they did the Vita thing of, like, you can play PlayStation oh, anywhere. Okay, yeah, and that was yeah. just, that was worse than that. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> that was even more you know like... Was worse than that? That black kid they got for the PSP. Marcus. <laughs> yes, Marcus. I will never forget Marcus. Marcus is a perfect marketing example of not understanding. 
Did they ever put him into PlayStation All Stars? <laughs> Marcus? <laughs> yeah. I kept waiting for him to show up as a secret character. Marcus! <laughs> he should have been the final boss, right? <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, um, they did two ads with him and canceled that. I'm I'm really thinking about it. Like, how does that? How does the Xbox One interface with my DVR or cable uh, set box? It has an IR thing. Okay. They keep talking about it has an IR sensor so it can spray IR light into your DVR. Yeah, wow. this thing is so tenuous and can it actually do this that I'm, right. I'm really I'm like, not there sure. There's so many little like things, how would it like know which channel? Between, like I have a Cox communication one. I'm sure that is very different from whatever. from a Direct TV um, or d- what is a Dish Network? Dish, Dish Network. Network. Yeah, um, either of those are going to have very different listings for what channels are what, which is why it is absolutely crazy that this is the direction they're going in. It's like they're saying we're going to tackle the hardest thing ever the most fragmented market base we can find because this is the path that a man has to walk <laughs> in yeah. when given the option between peace and the storm microsoft has chosen the storm but the, unfortunately they chose the destination on the other side of the storm which happens to be a shit place for most people <laughs> um but yeah it, it's Within microsoft the seven years that <laughs> all cable companies crash <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Like, <laughs> fuck. They're really not doing well over like, the last eight years. I keep waiting years. for someone to just buy out the rest of them. <laughs> Fucking look, over the last <laughs> it's eight like, years. You can't they... have a monopoly. They're like, if you sue us, we'll turn off TV. <laughs> so the old people are like, no. See, that's the problem. The FCC actually comes in. I see it as a problem, but that's a different topic for a different day. The <laughs> yeah. FCC comes in whenever anybody tries to make a bid on anyone and then tells them no. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason this isn't a problem, T-Mobile. Uh, they were almost bought by AT&T. That mm-hmm. would have ended up terrible. Um, the reason this is a problem, Sirius tried to buy XM Radio. No one uses either of those <laughs> yeah. services. They're like, no, guys, that would be a monopoly of the satellite radio service. And I'm like, congratulations! That's like having a monopoly on screensavers! No one cares! <laughs> I guess uh, somehow that, that got true, though. I mean, because they have Sirius XM now. So right? I don't know how... The FCC that... just said no at first. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened between that ruling and now. I don't want to know. I'll never forget when they told Bill Gates he, he could have a monopoly on computing. He's like, I don't. These other companies just blow. <laughs> Which would be easier to hear if he didn't have anti-competitive practices like Intel did. Which is amazing. Intel had that same horseshit of like, we're going to do crazy, crazy Gestapo shit to keep people from carrying your parts. And by the time you can prove it in a courtroom, you'll be dead. Yeah. And that's what happened with AMD. They are horribly crippled compared to what they used to be because of Intel being like, we'll give you guys an insane deal on our processors, but you can't carry a single product from AMD. And they're like, mm, okay. <laughs> Sounds fair to me. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, um, is there anything else from the meeting you guys wanted to bring up? Um you, what did you think about the prospect of being able to scale the movie down, order tickets while doing that? And I, I, I like, I loved watching him. Do, I, I don't know how actually running on the hardware any of that presentation was. Yeah, I'm real skeptical on that. But I, I did like, like especially the, after the other Connect presentations yes. we watched. <laughs> but like, like the grab shrink in and then like pull it back out. We're get, we're getting closer. I appreciate Microsoft if for nothing else. We're getting closer to some Minority Report shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's always nice. Like, we, we always said, like, that the Kinect was an interesting thing, and if it worked better, it'd be really cool. Now, the interesting thing, and uh, I'm glad you brought that up, because I get to clarify this. Uh, a lot of people said uh, that Microsoft got the latency on the, three, on the new Kinect um, down to two frames. That's a misunderstanding. What they actually said is they lowered it by, by two, two frames, frames. <laughs> which at its bloated ass delay isn't it's still not great it's good for interface stuff sort of i mean i sort of look at the resizing it down into the window and go couldn't a button like the playstation button for example do that sort of thing i understand the wanting to like you stick a, a bar on the side that's going to be your ordering a ticket or web browser and then the video there and how using your hands for that could make that easier but for the sheer, like, we're going to resize the video and go to the main menu. A fucking button did that on the PS3. Well, yeah, you, you can do it with a button, or you can, like, you can, if you're not going to be playing a video game, you can operate everything else you want to do with your Xbox just by sitting on the couch, not 
picking up a controller. Anymore. Yeah, and I can understand that. As long as that works perfectly well, I can understand that. Yeah, but that's once the thing. Again, if that works, <laughs> at the yeah. moment that becomes frustrating to do, it's fucked. It's gone. Uh-huh. You're not right. going to do it again. Like, if it works as well as Siri, mm-hmm. then we're good. I mean, I think the the worst part of that sort of system is it, it might work real well for if you're deliberately doing something. But it's when it does something when you're not trying to do something, like you're stretching, you're yawning, or something, and it does something. Yeah, that's I'm, the most annoying or most frustrating thing that can happen with that system. I'm kind of concerned about that too. Yeah, and uh, honestly, because uh, I was always worried about other people being in the room activating shit. But right. I, uh, one thing they kept, like Microsoft representatives kept parroting, was uh, it picking up who's holding the controller. I think the uh, the system might actually designate a user. And just ignore everyone else. Yeah, actually, um, they were saying they were going to do that with the PS4 too, and I think that's really cool. I think that's really cool to be like it recognizes you and it understands which players what and where they are. Like that's some really cool tech. Um, but now I'm like, they can set it to that one guy that does all that, but then what if he leaves and someone else wants to pause the movie or anything like that? I guess they need to find a controller or something. Or it's. I know that uh, the funny story from this is during the Xbox conference, they streamed it onto the Xbox. People who watched that live stream, every time he said Xbox anything, <laughs> it connected it up and shut it down. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. See, it, it, yeah. if they can solve that, that's something. Yeah, like I, I don't know because their sensors recognizing can, voice pattern. Yeah, differentiate but... between a voice in the room and a voice coming out of the speaker. Right. Yeah, and there's a whole nother layer of this of like, maybe I don't want it to be set to the word Xbox because of situations like that. Maybe I don't yeah. want these words set to these specific things. It would be great if I could go in and change this. Maybe there should be a password for starting up a specific movie. Mm-hmm. Like, like say I name my Xbox and uh, Thaddeus. It'd be like, Thaddeus, Fight Club! And it just starts yeah. a Fight Club. Like, that's I mean, really cool. And at, at that point of customizability, I, I demand that the system recognize uh, a specific set of hand gestures to do different functions. Yeah, like my <laughs> So I can ninpo my way to a Facebook <laughs> post. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I guess at this point, we'll, we'll go ahead and, uh, unless anybody has any other comments closing on the meeting specifically. Um, uh, I, I, think... I, I remember feeling kind of bad with myself when I went, there's a chick in charge of Halo now? Oh, that was really sexist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was really sexist. But what was amusing, and you saw this if you follow the Gigaboots Twitter account, um, at the point where females came on stage, Bob says to me over Steam, oh, there's a woman in the conference. I guess Microsoft won. And I'm just like, yeah, knowing people... Because yeah, I mean, there's because I mean the the number one problem with Sony's conference is that there weren't any females showing off their games for the system when it was unveiled for the first time. And I'm like, if you could find somebody who's Jonathan Blow status that's a female, they would fucking go for that. Sony doesn't have choices yeah. here. You don't fucking understand. In, in your naive little world, there is some female Jonathan Blow out there, in your opinion, mm-hmm. and she should have been on stage. That's great for you, but that's not the fucking real world. There is no person with the status of Jonathan Blow except for Jonathan Blow. And then right below him, it's Phil Fish. And below him, there's like no one remotely as notorious as those two. So Phil Fish wasn't on stage. Guess who was? (laughs) But back to the Xbox thing. The fucking females come out on stage and I'm like, ah, they have females. They're going to have female game developers. It's going to be a very direct blow against. And then they were media people. And I was like, oh, that's disappointing. Right. And then they got another female on stage. And I was like, yeah, this one. Oh, she's a media person too. Why the fuck aren't there any female? Damn it. (laughs) (laughs) Like, well, I'm in charge of the Xbox Entertainment Group. Congratulations. I don't care about you. You have earned those this level of uncaring in so few words. When I was watching the videos of the conference, then then they pan out to the crowds while while I heard oh, applause. Man, we oh, no. do, do they is Microsoft still sitting its employees in the back? Yeah, actually, stories? there were two full rows in the back, and as just Jeff Gersman from Giant Bomb was walking in, they were practicing applause. God damn it! Yeah, now, it's now the so great, obvious. And the great it's, thing is, people on game trailers and I haven't noticed any other websites say this. They're like, those were Xbox employees who were just excited that the new console is coming out, and they were just applauding to support their their device. And there was only one sane person in the podcast who was like, "Okay, I understand that. That isn't what they fucking did. 
what they did was change to a fucking TV channel, and then there was an awkward pause, and then they applauded like there was a light. And the guy's like, I was there, there wasn't a light. And it's like, no, okay. That was obviously canned applause by a live audience. Yeah. Like, that was obviously clap now. Don't fucking pretend it wasn't because you didn't see a light. There were two rows of people who were never in sight of the camera for a goddamn reason. Yeah. Like, they're... <laughs> and it's creepy. Like, it was creepy. That was my response. I'm like, God, this is terrifying. Like, I knew it was staged, right? Right. Like, you know with these things whether or not it's staged because of that awkward pause. But uh -huh. when it zooms in and no one's clapping yeah, and you hear, like, people you going see, crazy. You like, the eight rows of laptop light and there's no applause going on up there. I saw right? one time there one dude was golf there. clapping. <laughs> You know, the people who I'd still hesitate to refer to as mainstream gaming media, yeah. really, there needs to be something between us and the assholes on stage who will just stop pretending that what's going on isn't bullshit. Right. I, I would really appreciate if we just had really skeptical assholes in charge of the media for gaming who weren't like who knew enough about technology to know what was and what wasn't it really shit, right now because we really need that horrible mix of blind naivete and just spoiled entitlement yeah and the worst part is the industry itself makes this even worse because they will just blackball you they will fuck you up if you say some shit mm -hmm. about them they don't like um i heard a rumor and this seems to be substantiated mm -hmm. by all of the japanese coverage Japanese press was not invited, and when they tried to pay their own way in, they wouldn't let them. That's what I heard, yeah. Wow, I did not hear that. That's... I, mean, I mean, this conference was clearly aimed for Americans. It, But the blacklist but to, 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 uh, to, country is yeah. weird. Yeah. Like, that's bizarre. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I think they gave up on Japan. They stopped producing Japanese 360s some time ago. Mm -hmm. they, they tried. They tried fucking hard for, like, 11 years, and... Yeah, they just didn't want that shit. It just didn't fucking work out, so whatever. Like, okay, I've got a, I've got a PS3 and I've got a Wii. Looks over. I'm going to buy another Wii. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll buy a second DS. I need something to trade Pokemon to. <laughs> Who doesn't buy a second DS? Uh, Man, no, no fucking Street Pass is amazing in our country. God damn it, Japan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Street Pass probably is amazing in their country. Yeah. But, um, okay, we're going to take a really short break again, and then we're going to talk about the post-meeting stuff. Um, that is where this really goes downhill. <laughs> Okay, we're back. Um, Bob made a good point right after we turned off the mic. The one part of the meeting we didn't talk about is the 15 exclusive titles. What was it, eight of which are coming out in the first year? No, eight of which are original IPs, all of oh, which okay. are coming out in the first year, yeah, which is... Go. Yeah, I don't know. Unless they're all Kinect. Oh, there's a lot of Kinect. There's no way there's... Yeah, that I don't these know how many of these things are fucking minigames. Because right? there's no way Microsoft's, Microsoft Game Studios can produce... 15 AAA titles in a single year. That is impossible. The way he well, said it is, you know, Microsoft is continuing to invest in studios. Microsoft is continuing to buy studios. Right. There's a whole other scale of this of like Microsoft Studios at large have had extreme entropy, even more than fucking Sony. Um, they have shut down a ton of. Ensemble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ensemble's fucking dead. They, there are a ton of developers for them that are just fucking dead. The RAT is getting rare, or getting rare to do one of their classic IPs. So that's probably going to be is disappointing. Anyone at rare left at rare? No, no one. When, when can we just can, call it Rare Atari now? <laughs> right? <laughs> like every time a studio dies, we just add its name to the chain, the chain that binds the industry. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm not excited about Rare making a game. Um, I can understand why people might be in excited because it's like, Rare's going to do one of their classic games. Yay! Which would matter if Rare weren't consistently shit for the last decade. Yeah. Nuts and Bolts was great. I, I watched JonTron's video on it. He seemed pleased. He seemed pleased. <laughs> <laughs> pleased as pie. <laughs> like I knew it was sarcasm. But I couldn't hear the sarcasm. <laughs> I was about to bite your throat. <laughs> <laughs> so they made too human too, right? <laughs> sure. Why not? Somebody had to, and no one's gonna own up to it being their fault. 
Oh, that'd be amazing. Are you the fuckers who made two humans? No, no, nah, man. That was that was fucking rare. Uh huh. Yeah. We didn't do that. I think Activision made that. Game. I think I think that was Infinity Ward. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, one of their off years. <laughs> they just turned that out. This is a side project. Is there anybody left from Blizzard's original team? Because every time they make a game, it's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> Except no? when it has the word D and E all. Oh, yeah, no, no. It. Not when they're making Blizzard games. When they leave and make other games. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. No, uh, everyone... Like, the, the halves of Diablo went to Torchlight and um, that one Marvel game that was Diablo, basically. Mm. Okay. Um, so you know, a bunch of early Blizzard guys went to ArenaNet, and then like uh-huh. one of the three guys who made WoW is working for Cryptozoic now. Yeah, they, they, it's just all over the place. It's kind of sad. That's the sort there of needs thing. to be a website to track this shit, right? Just like some kind of game IMDb. pedigree, and like by percentage of like how awesome the game was, like they take a little up and you add the team up to how good the game's probably going to be. I'm really tempted to cut that out of this entirely so we can go make that and make all the money. Because <laughs> that, that is like gold. <laughs> oh, well, our fan base is small enough. <laughs> right? We'll go Two make it now. Two days later, Wakata has a new website. God damn it! <laughs> Wakata! God, no! <laughs> if they made it, they would have made Facebook. <laughs> wow! <laughs> So then we get to be the jocks chasing the karate kid around the gym? Is that who we are now? Yes, Gigaboots.com. Strike hard, strike fast, no mercy. (laughs) Wow, okay. So about the 15 games. And And how like three of them will be games. Yeah. I bet Rise is still in there. Rise, yeah. Even though they did use that already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that has to be one of the eight. There's no way. Um, But yeah. No, no, wait. Yeah, well, see, that would be the original IP. IP. Yeah, yeah it's not out yet. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'm sort of sitting there with that too. And um, uh, t- t- what? One thing where they are sucking up so much to uh, publishers by doing this super DRM stuff. Mm-hmm. Maybe they got a lot of exclusives. It's possible. But that many? I don't think so. That's, I don't know. That the, no, I really don't think they can suck up to publishers. Publishers are so terrified. I don't think they're going to invest heavily in an exclusive. That this time has true. passed yeah. for some publisher outside of the first party. Our age like, of amazing money decadence is... No. Hmm? It is not gone. I mean, just go watch the Killzone Shadowfall trailer. It has all moved first party. Mm. Yeah. Which yeah, I'm that's... okay with because it, as it's an exclusive, they can do more amazing things like Uncharted 2, 3, uh, Last, Last of Us. Of Us. Mm-hmm. Um those are all doing stunning things because they're only on one platform. They can afford that much time to do assembly coding on the very low level, you know, optimization mm-hmm. to make amazing things. And like, here's my thoughts on the 15 games, right? Mm. <clears throat> Care to share? <laughs> <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Um, <laughs> uh, fucking, um, what I was going to say is when it comes to buying my next-gen console, excluding the Wii U, because this does not work for it, I'm looking at what is going to play the exclusives I want the most, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, no, secondarily. Mm. Yeah, that is the second. First place goes to things that thing that is going to provide the best experience for the most games, and that would be third-party games for the most part. Mm. Um, ergo... If the PS4 is more powerful and does less weird shit that I'm not interested in, that would be that. And I'm a little disappointed that because you can make a weaker console. Um, in fact, history has proven that the weaker console, the weakest console, generally wins. But that's because it generally won that based on price point, mm-hmm. like the Wii. It was $200 cheaper than the PS3 and 100 cheaper than the 360. The Xbox One is probably going to be the same price as the PS4. Um, and will be less good at playing games. That sort of puts it in this weird territory. So I'm not so concerned about the exclusive IPs unless it's something absolutely, like, crazy stunning of, like, yeah, we found a second Naughty Dog in the depths of Africa, <laughs> yeah. and they I made know. Last of Us 2. They, they wrote the entire base code document on the side of a mountain. We- <laughs> <laughs> was, fucking amazing. I mean, the only thing I'm worried about 
that happening for is uh, that rumored thing from Infinity Ward that remains. Oh, yeah, Respawn the Entertainment. Titans. That sounds really cool. Yeah, th- it does sound really cool. Um, it could be absolutely amazing. If it's Xbox exclusive, that will suck. Um, but between Destiny... <laughs> yeah, Destiny's kind of that, like, oh. I don't need Halo anymore. <laughs> I don't I, need Xbox. Fuck! <laughs> I Gears is over. Feel Why dirty I whenever care? I watch a Destiny trailer because I'm like, I am so up for this game. I have no idea what it's like, but based on these fucking like, they're so good at doing the yeah, yeah, this is epic as shit. <laughs> I'm right? totally on board now. I feel like such a whore. Talk dirty to me. <laughs> it's yeah. of, now they have that new commercial that feels like those Halo Three commercials and yeah, just, yeah. Oh, it's. Yeah, oh. they're really good at this. Like, they know what awesome sauce is, and they make it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Saucier. So, yeah. Hey, hang on a least, second. You, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You, you said earlier the uh, you think the three uh, the, the Xbox, Xbox One, One is, is going, is going to, be, to cost the same as the uh, the PS4. I I I'm very convinced of that. No, uh, I highly doubt it's going to cost less. It'll either cost the same hmm. or more. I, I figured that'd be a way they'd try to go this gen. I thought that too, but they had to build so much into it in order to be able to do the. DVR things like if they're able to scale that image down that means it's not just a hardware throughput mm. did they show them scaling down the TV oh they scaled down they everything scaled else the movie. I don't they, know if they scaled the they, TV they did the, the live ESPN stuff they had the- that's true they did overlay that so what that means is they have to be capable of writing to that video space so it's not just a hardware throughput it's not yeah. a switch which is what I figured it would be until just now right so, in order Which to do that, cool they essentially image. have a capture card in there. Oh, right. The, with TV, they put that whole overlay of the special menu for going through the guide. So, yeah, that's yeah. definitely... Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of integration So, there. so there's got to be a capture card to some extent in there. And capture cards for 1080p? Yeah. <laughs> that is... I know that's fucking expensive yeah. because I keep crying over how expensive it is. I'm like, but the Wii U! <laughs> we need our 1080p video so we can get Nintendo fanboy... Oh, wait, they don't care. <laughs> but the PS4! <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's that's what we do with our crazy bitch and profits. Mm. I was like, wait, H- but HDCP will get... Oh, wait, they also have the component output on that. Unlike cer- certain other consoles. Wait. Oh, you, What? Say uh, HDCP will n- well, you have a component output on the PS4 where you do not on the uh, uh, Xbox. Okay, that's what you're saying. Uh, yeah, if I invested in a capture card for the PS4, I would build that thing that <laughs> circumvents HDCP because oh, okay. guess what, assholes? It's fucking out there and it's really easy to build relative to you know fucking dealing with your horse shit. <laughs> so you need to stop pretending HDCP works at all. Stop fucking over people just so you can pretend that the system works. In the least. If I want to rip my Blu-ray movie, I'll fucking build the HDCP thing, fucking rip it to a 1080p fucking capture card, and then fucking put it on a torrent site. I'm not doing that, but I fucking will. It is very fucking easy. He'll do it. He's crazy. I will, I will do Don't it. Don't fucking push me. Don't make me. <laughs> you won't like me when I'm pirate. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, that's, that's another thing we actually didn't talk about in the specs part because it's right. very easy to overlook. Uh, it's something um, I didn't notice until two days after the event. Um, there, it's HDMI out and it's HDMI in. There's no fucking component. Hmm. They basically are running with... No one has an HDMI... or No one doesn't have an HDMI TV. Hmm. Even though they're Which aiming for the people the... with TVs. Uh, you know, with and, normal cable television. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy mixed messaging. Right, they're after that market that's pretty, like... Non-existent. It, it's, that, it's what you go for after a few years, where you have a cheaper console. Like, those, these are not the people who are going to spend 400 450 whatever it is, Yeah, day one. Yeah, I don't think the people who watch cable television and want to use this thing as DVR are the crazy fanatics that are going to spend huge amounts of money based on that feature. Uh, it's something that more key, uh, more jive with the people who do launch consoles would be something absolutely amazing for the games. Because when I buy a tool, I buy it based on how good it is to do the thing I want it to do, not the ancillary weird things it does. Did I abuse that word? No, I was just... I was. I just kind of realized that isn't it kind of weird that we've had both console reveals before E3? Not really. E3, they're limited on time. Yeah. yeah. I was so unveiling it and covering all that shit. Holy fuck. Right. They already had a mixed message problem with their exclusive event. Mm-hmm. I was actually wondering, like, 
I think Sony did it right and gave us a good bit of breathing room between E3 and their their reveal. No. And this, it's just like, bam, bam. The amazing this thing is, is a, a lot of people have actually correctly identified this as, as Sony is trying to drum up developer interest. They're trying to get indie developers because they understand as a sustainable industry, indie really is the way forward. I'm not saying this as a guy who's like, indie games are so much better than AAA. I'm saying this as a guy of like, an indie game can spend three years in development and only make you know a very limited amount more than was spent on the budget it'll be successful and those developers will get to continue making games mm -hmm. a triple a game can profit by a million or two million or three million and it fuck that studio it's dead mm -hmm. um as a sustainable way going forward to get because ga these games consoles to make triple a games necessitate much huger budgets much huger games and they take longer to make so the way forward is to make sure you get all of these indie developers on your system because you want as many games on that. You want all the games to be on that. You want that to be the hotness, mm -hmm. which is why they revealed early. They revealed before GDC, and they did talks at GDC to explain to people some of the benefits of developing on the PS4. Right. It was a very smart fucking move, and they sort of see where things are going forward. Microsoft apparently does not give a single fuck. You can't self-publish on Xbox Live. Mm-hmm. That is continuing forward, apparently, which is weird because everyone else, like, you can self-publish on Nintendo, you can self-publish on any of PlayStation's platforms. That's obviously the way forward because no indie developer wants to sell their game to a fucking publisher. They just want to fucking make the game. Mm -hmm. If they want to deal with publishers, they would probably go work at a much larger developer and give up their dream. But that's not their dream. Their dream is to make the game they want to make. They don't want to make it sellable to a publisher who's going to come in and ask for weird, arbitrary requests that end up causing the thing to collapse in on itself. So yeah, Microsoft's basically the opposite of Sony in this respect of, we revealed this late because we don't need you. We revealed this late because we're about these 15 awesome games that we were able to fund ourselves and we don't need you. You can come to us when you're ready. And that's why they revealed so close to E3. Does Microsoft think they're Nintendo? They actually do. They think I've, they're I've Nintendo. I've been kind of worried about that with how they carry themselves PR-wise, yeah. that they thought they're Nintendo. See, right? at the beginning yeah. of this gen, they thought they were Sony with the PS1. They thought the 360 was Sony with the PS1. And in a lot of ways, eh, kind of. Uh, they did a lot of stuff more smoothly and thoroughly than Sony did. But around now, because that worked relatively, and I really mean relatively, like they didn't stomp the PS3 anywhere except for in North America. I almost said Florida. Anywhere except for Florida because of all the bros! <laughs> so many bros in their moms! I'm blaming you, FSU. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, like, outside of North America and worldwide, they really didn't smash the PS3. Like, they edged out over it and the Wii obliterated both of them yeah. but they seem to have this idea that they're now Nintendo and they can hardball everyone because they can self fund and that's not gonna work yeah that machine breaks down <laughs> I mean uh, yeah starting with the Kinect and doing this whole selling it to that user base that bought the 360 after three years of being out and mm -hmm. them not buying it yeah yeah uh, the, yeah, those price gap differences, that's the same thing of they won't buy it immediately. That's not something that... The people... moms and pops of the world are not going to spend that much money on a fucking awesome TV thing. Like, n no one in that sector who would would buy something this expensive that does that one thing. It doesn't make TV amazingly better. It makes TV more integrated into gaming and other functionality. Yeah, it's it's not for them. The, like, yeah. like the TV functionality isn't going after a market. It's just inclusive. But at the same time, when every system comes with a Connect and every system is able to be used with a Connect, and it is heavily about TV, which Connect being mandatory, we totally called it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously. You know, I'm gonna go I ahead think. and, and um, like my prediction, there's gonna be a mandatory fee. For what? For Xbox, playing Xbox. Like, gold membership will be mandatory. Or or some lesser payment level. Oh. Yeah, we'll get into some predictions <laughs> at the end. We'll do okay. a prediction <laughs> segment. That'll be fun. Um, okay, so we covered the meeting. We covered the specs. Uh, backwards compatibility. We're just going to touch on this briefly because everyone seems to think this is a huge thing. Agro, what are your thoughts on backwards compatibility? Um, it 
doesn't have any and doesn't your 360 still work yeah no it, well it won't fit <laughs> next to your x1 well clearly so, not see that's sort of, just, I, now correct me if if i'm wrong here because i am i am not a wizard. computer science literate yeah. um are, are we not reaching the point of complexity in computing where expecting a new console to be able to play the old console immediately is kind of not going to happen? Well, actually, here's the thing. If you look at the larger trend over time, uh, when we first started video games, we could do it. Hmm. And then Nintendo uh, didn't do that for a specific reason of like, oh, well, we, we want to make sure our new console is the absolute best it can be. So we're dropping our old console. So that happened with the Super NES, happened mm -hmm. again with the N64, um, and then it happened with the GameCube out of necessity of the format. The Sega Genesis can actually play Master System games. It was backwards compatible. The Ataris could play older Atari games. It was mm -hmm. backwards compatible. But the Sega Dreamcast could play Sega Genesis games and Saturn games. It happened. Backwards compatible. <laughs> He's lying! He's lying, <laughs> Agro! Yeah, I'm thinking, like, I never had a Dreamcast. Did it have cartridge slots? <laughs> Did it? You flipped Did it over. Oh, Did like, looking on back? the back? I only saw it in a Babbage's, and it was it was in the case. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, when we get to the point of the PS1 and the PS2, what we were finally able to do is, like, oh, the PS1 was advanced technology, but that was, like, six years before the PS2. We mm -hmm. had a nice long gen there. Actually, it may have been longer than that. No. No? What? Eat? Yeah, no, 94, yep. Okay, so we had six long years to turn the PS1 chip into a sub-processor on the PS2. It's very clever. They made it uh, what you call an, an ICH. They made it so that way it would manage all your connections, like your memory cards, your PS, your controllers for your PS2. It did that. But when you were playing PS1 games, it could play the PS1 games. It's fucking genius. We get to the PS3. We weren't so much able to do that. When we did, it drove up the cost of the console extremely, and they knew they had to do it at launch to keep people interested. But yeah. and I technologically, love they did it. because they freaking they promised it. So like, yeah, yeah, it, it may not have been the best business decision. It may not have been the best engineering uh, way to go. But honestly, I love the fact that they did, there was a fucking emotion engine in the yeah. launch PS3. Yeah, emotion engine and graphics synthesizer chip. There Both was a PS2 just, in there. There was a fucking PS2 in there, and that was amazing. And it um, was heavy. And it was fucking yes. heavy. Yeah. And it's fucking sharp. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we weren't really able to pull that off gracefully last mm -hmm. time. Um, the Xbox 360 wasn't able to pull that off gracefully last time. I never really understood what was up with 360. It had such limited backwards compatibility that if it played it, you were lucky. And if it played it correctly, you were super lucky. But it seemed like, like they just kept adding games to this list. That, yeah, that it but it, was, it maybe got to 10%. Like, it wasn't Weird. a huge percent of them that were fully compatible. Right. It was uh, the popular ones. My, my, honestly. No, yeah. no, it wasn't. Because, okay, like, Barbie me. Horse Adventure was on that list. Yeah. The first list. And, like, can I play Halo? No. <laughs> no. You can play Halo 1 and 2 kind of. Yeah, they got. Halo 2, they got running in HD. That was, that was, nice. I was, I was so happy. Uh, too bad I hated Halo 2. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, that was, that was bad. You guys' relationship with Halo 2. <laughs> yeah, it was... Yeah. But in any case, uh, back to compatibility. Let's <laughs> yeah. not bring that up. We don't need this podcast to have nothing but comments from people thinking we're assholes. In any case, yeah, uh, there are people like Halo 2. They're fucking morons. In any case... <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa! No! They're fucking morons! <laughs> but this isn't about that. So, <laughs> be fucking morons elsewhere. Uh -huh. In any case... Um, so yeah, that wasn't graceful at all. The reason that we was able to be a GameCube because it was, it was the, the GameCube. GameCube. <laughs> and they didn't upgrade enough substantially to like they made a very cheap design, and that's how they were able to do it. They didn't have to leave behind the last generation because they didn't <laughs> progress <laughs> mm -hmm. with the Wii U. It was that yet again. They didn't hold. They didn't leave behind the Wii. It can play the Wii games because it didn't progress drastically. But the PS3 to PS2, PS2 was a very powerful, very unique architecture because they wanted it to be powerful. Right. So when they got to the PS3, they just had to shove the whole thing in there and charge $600 because of the Blu-ray and that thing and some other horseshit. And it's way too underpowered graphics card. God damn it. <laughs> so when we get to the PS4, it's super obvious. Like they want to make it easy to develop for. They want to make it drastically better. They want to do all these things. There's no way mm -hmm. with the Xbox One or the PS4, we would have gotten backwards compatibility. Yeah. No fucking way. And that is acceptable because that is the necessitated by progress. Right. Now, the interesting thing about it is by the end of this gen, backwards compatibility will be a different thing. 
Especially with Sony, I think, with how much they're pumping this Gaikai shit with the streaming. Now, this is interesting, um, actually, because Sony actually has a patent where you can plug in something that is a PS2 Ooh. and PS3 into your PS4. Tell me it's shaped like a Sony Walkman. I hope it is. <laughs> because fuck yes, I, Walkman. I hope it's like the size of a laptop hard drive, those external ones, mm-hmm. you know, the really small ones. I just hope you just plug it, it in. for a disc. Yeah. That would be awesome. You just plug oh, it into the USB. Okay, 3. then you wouldn't need to pay for it. You just yeah, huh? Yeah, that'd be really interesting. Yes, they have that'll this never leave to... Japan, or that'll never leave Japan. Yeah, this... no, no. I think it, I think this it will. Is... I think there's a market for backwards compatibility in a limited sense of like we will sell you backwards compatibility. Like I'll line up for that. Like oh yeah, what? Yeah. I, I, I get to I get to play that on my on my my on my my my, my I PS4. Things that are physically modular. Yeah, I did. mean, I was a Genesis kid, so <laughs> so you had to out of necessity. <laughs> I, I actually, love this. <laughs> I didn't have any of that shit. Like I, I twenty had years shit. later, I'm on YouTube. I'm like, where the fuck was this when I was a kid? <laughs> In Defenia, you should have <laughs> you should have come over. It was pretty awesome. Last we had, processing, you guys. We had Revenge of the Ninja. <laughs> I mean, I fucking plugged Sonic 2 into Sonic and Knuckles, and I thought I was Voltroning it up. Yeah, and you were, and I was too. And then the CD came out, and I was like, oh! Because <laughs> that was so much better. But yeah, um, so any comments on backwards compatibility? Not particularly. Okay, okay good transition here. Uh, there's a patent Microsoft holds and has been around for months and months. And it is worrying with this whole, it has to be connected to the internet, which we'll get into the exact level of that later. But the patent says, and this is not exaggerated, I read the fucking patent. And the worst part is there are people out there who are pretending this isn't a patent. They're pretending that this isn't how it's exactly going to be used. This is what it is. When you sell, like say Microsoft signs a deal with the studio to sell their movie or rent their movie on the three, uh, the and Xbox One. There's a patent for the Kinect to detect how many people are in the room. And once it supersedes the amount you paid for on the license, it will stop playing the movie. I'm not fucking exaggerating. The usage case was over four. At the point where it's over four, that is a public performance and you did not pay. F- Agro's going fucking crazy with his anger right now. But yeah, that's that's something they've patented. That's something they're interested in doing. And that plus the weird activision, activation thing and the always connected thing makes this fucking horrible. The thing I find very interesting is that a lot of people make jokes about how Google's becoming Skynet because they're, 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 they're taking all this information. And the people you need to be worried about are Microsoft because they've done this shit before and they do it all the time. I, I think it was with Vista when Vista came out. Yeah. They, they had this script that was like detect like looking for pirated software uh-huh. and they gathered all this data on all these people and they gave it to the FBI like look all these people are pirating. The FBI is like how did you get this information? And they're like we have this special script in Windows Vista. Is this on the systems you sold to us? <laughs> yes. What the fuck do you think you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> we, we're helping? That is a horrible invasion of privacy. Yeah, right. That is like, okay, as someone who's interested in making content, that isn't fucking my place to tell you how you use my content. If I gave you the fucking movie, if you buy the fucking movie for me and you watch it with five people, 10 people, 20 people, fuck, go fucking ahead. That's horseshit. I, I think this this is going to fall under shit we've been getting closer and closer to, especially in the last five, last 10 years. Licensing laws, intellectual property laws, they have to change. Yeah. With the internet, it's mm-hmm. ha- it's got to be different. Yeah. Because this shit's not going to cut it anymore. Yeah, our yeah. laws are not keeping up with technology in the least. It is, and the people who are trying to make new ones are fucking retarded. Yeah. <laughs> and pay for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, why are you trying to get a law passed that's basically sponsored by Comcast? <laughs> <laughs> why do you think that's a good thing, in the least? But yeah, that's absolutely heinous. And to be absolutely honest here, I'm not interested in buying digital movies. I'm not interested in renting them. But I will never pay for a piece of hardware that is going to fucking do that. Yeah, no, and just the thing about like, oh, they're not going to... Yeah, they will. Yeah, no. Yeah, they, all I, this, I, they I, won't use it for this or they won't use it for that. I No, that's what it's there in, for. In very strict first edition Dungeons & Dragons terms, Microsoft is an evil company <laughs> they don't care and they sometimes delight in destruction yeah what was um i heard some other stuff about patents for li- scanning the room for licensed material like say a pepsi 
in putting up ads for such things. Wow. I'm looks like I mean that I seems that seems almost illegal. Yeah, right. I that, mean, a lot of people were making jokes about how like, oh well the connect is always on and always listening. Microsoft would do this kind of Orwellian nightmare bullshit. Yeah, yeah they'd listen they're in selling, for whatever they want. They're selling you the 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 always connected, always online thing for, well, you can say Xbox turn on and it'll turn on. It's like, oh, that's a cool feature. So when it comes down to, yeah, it's always on, people are going to be like, yeah, that's so I can turn it on by saying Xbox yeah. on and With I can the, do all this stuff. They backed off the always online thing recently. Actually. What it works out to, and this has been the final word on it, mm -hmm. it has to be online once a day. Yeah, it has to be connected all the time. It's going to do checks. Yeah. No. So the yeah, moment you're not that's online, that's, that's this. still is bad. Well, I like, think. like we need this feature, so it has to always be on. This is this is this is what I'm talking about with the laws having to change here culturally. We we are at a turning point mm -hmm. with this kind of stuff mm -hmm. culturally, and right here, right now, this object, the connect, if if it does this kind of stuff. This has to not be okay. Yeah, because if people kowtow to that sort of thing, holy shit, we are fucked as a civilization. Yeah, that is the foot in the door that will fuck us over. And yet, absolutely everyone's been like, oh, that patent's not going to get used. It doesn't matter if it's not going to get used. Like, at a, at a blatant level, they have shown intent by patenting that. Mm-hmm. What more do you fucking need? Like, if there's a dude on your street corner who smiles at you every time you come home, and he's like, I'm going to rape your wife and kids. <laughs> you don't just let that guy keep doing that. You don't let him into your house. <laughs> don't fucking let him into your house. You know, honestly, like, any company having it is bad, but it's, it's the fact that it's Microsoft. Yeah. Like, like to, to make the parallel again, if Google had that patent, I'd be like, that's kind of worrisome. But I, I believe, honestly, that Google would go, man, we... We probably shouldn't do that. We'll get sued the fuck out of. Yeah, I mean, they fucking molested Wi-Fi routers in Europe while driving the Google, you know, Maps car around. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, they got sued to oblivion by yeah. the EU. And that also, shit Also, based happens. on their track record, I don't... At this point, I don't care how much of my information Google has. Personally. Not, not, not like, um, uh, legally. But right. personally, I don't... Because I don't think Google's going to fuck me over. Microsoft will fuck me. Yeah, they will because <laughs> they have a track record of doing this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Agro, is there something you want to tell? I don't us? want Sony to have that much of my information because you know someone else is going to get it from them. <laughs> yeah, I, d I don't want Sony. Like that's the thing. If the, it's necessitated that the camera's always on and connected to the internet, I won't be cool with the PS4 either. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not okay with that as a concept. Yeah. If I had to leave my webcam always active and connected to the internet to use my la a laptop, I would not fucking buy a laptop. Mm -hmm. well, um, I would rip the webcam out. I would the, disallow it to do that. <laughs> Something weird about this is there's been a lot of sympathizers that have said, oh, well, this is clearly Xbox is doing this. Sony's right behind the corner about to do this. And Isn't that terrifying that they assume, oh, yeah, everyone's going to do this. Come on, guys. But this is okay the mentality I'm talking about. Right. The, but the president of the freaking uh, Sony Computer Entertainment Kasurai. came out. Or not Kazurai. Shu, Shuhei Yoshida. Oh, Worldwide yeah. Studios. Yeah. He came out and literally said you can play the game, play the system offline. It, I it is fully offline. And this happened so many times with the Xbox One and the PS4, and it's really, really getting fucking annoying of like, well, guys, they're going to do that with used games too. Like, no, they said two months ago that they would never do that. And I know why they would never do that. That would piss off so many retail partners. Right? So in any case, patents aside, let's see what our next topic is. Oh, it's the used, used game games policy. Oh, okay. oh, good. <laughs> now, I've heard a few different versions of this. Yeah. Ranging from the the worst being if you give your friend the disc to play it, he'll have to pay full MSRP for the game. That seems to be true. But I've also heard reports, and this is part of the maelstrom of journalists getting told completely conflicting information uh -huh. right. after this conference. Um, that it isn't, it, it's not, they won't have to pay a fee. There's something about, like, uh, activating and deactivating the game on the console. Now, see, the interesting thing here is, was that in the article I sent you from Polygon? Maybe. I okay, went to a few the other interesting ones. thing here is that that sort of thing came out, like, on Friday. You know, it was a full three or four days after the conference that that sort of thing started coming out. And the exact quote in the article always seems to be from the different articles I've seen. We've heard from from sources close to Xbox 
one that it will not require that. Everything from anyone at the conference, everything from an executive who's speaking publicly about it has said it's going to require a fee. Phil Harrison, Don Matrick, all these people keep saying it's going to require a fee to activate it for the new system. But the story with the sources close to Xbox, which is something I don't think we should qualify as yeah, certifiable. Yeah, no, that just sounds like bullshit. I think this whole yeah. thing just has a big wait for E3 stamp on it. Yeah, right? that's it's how like, I feel. I made that judging the waters by doing all of this horrible stuff. It sounds stuff. like the kind of ham-fisted thing Microsoft PR would do. <laughs> that's so awful. Like, the worst part is they, like they expected might have given this... conflicting information on purpose. They expected this to go over well. They wholly expected. That's always the fun part. And then when with somebody somebody talked to them about how poor they went over, he's like, "Well, judging from what we've seen via our Twitter hashtag and all our other connections, it's been divided: forty percent positive, forty percent negative, twenty percent don't know." And I'm like, "Motherfucker, I have seen ninety-eight percent negative, one percent eh, and one percent positive. That is what I've seen." And yeah. I'm and your not. Your Twitter feed full of the last two rows in the back doesn't count. Right. Right. I mean, I saw like. Polls going on GameSpot. Polls going on GameFAQs. I don't... IGN didn't put one up, but those two were just so ridiculously heavily... Like, this is some, awful. Like, <laughs> I, I, something I've heard from absolutely, like, the Xbox fanboys is like, well, guess I'm getting a PS4, and they sound fucking angry. They aren't yeah. happy about this, but they're fucking gonna do it because they will fucking play games and get the dick out of their ass. Mm -hmm. just, you know what I find? Like, we didn't touch it on the DRM thing. Yeah. The funny part. Yeah. In two months, when Packers knock that out of there and basically are able to play the games on it anyway. Oh, when hackers remove that Yeah, remove the, the check yeah, I mean, every 24 hours because it happens. Yeah. It always happens. And it, now when you have Windows on there, it's easy. Yeah, once the Windows layer is involved there and once, because it is blatantly Windows kernel, um, which, I mean, look at the thing. It's Windows 8. Um, <laughs> Like, but here's the thing: it, it won't take very long for them to figure out where the certification server or authentication server is, and how frequently it needs to do that, and what sort of handshake they have. Because mm -hmm. you you don't need that advance of hardware to figure out what exactly you would need to do to circumvent that. Yeah. And then, congratulations, you made the user experience worse for everyone and done nothing about the problem. Yeah. <laughs> No, you've made it worse for everyone except the problem. No, oh, that's true. Yeah. And their justification for this whole, oh, you need to install a game and put in the code is, oh, okay, now you can play it without the disc. I'm like, that's not that great an advantage. You know, that doesn't concern me that much. If I was worried about that, I'd go buy the game digitally, and these rights would make sense. Right. That's, that's another thing here. Like, it, it, when you buy a game digitally, you're used to that sort of... Like, I'm not going to be able to give this to anyone. I'm not going to be able to sell it. But I'm doing this because I want it to always be on my system. Mm -hmm. I did that with Blaze Blue on the Vita. I'm perfectly cool with Blaze Blue being like that. I never want to give up Blaze Blue. <laughs> <laughs> I want Blaze Blue to be with me everywhere, always, forever. Yeah. I mean, like, you buy a game digitally, you're buying a license for the game. This is part of the, these laws needing to be changed. It's, uh... <laughs> Yeah, now they want everything to be a license. It's getting to the point where I'd pay a subscription to Sony to get whatever is coming out on their console. Fuck it. Make it like Netflix. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's been rumors uh, back when PS uh, PlayStation Plus came out, like within the few months afterwards, that that was going to become a thing. Because that is profitable. <laughs> it's very profitable. Um, but yeah, the, the used game thing, the concept of... I can't trade in a game if I don't end up liking it is absolutely heinous. Now, what I've heard, uh, like there was some GameStop article I think you linked me to. It sounds like they're going to try and do something to infrastructure it with retail stores like GameStop. Uh -huh. But that doesn't solve the problem of individuals. Because that's like, oh yeah, you can go to, to Big Brother and do it through him. Yeah. Like, we have made a deal with GameStop, so that way they're involved and this whole process is fluid. Okay, there are two scales to this. One, I want to just give this to my friend. We're trading games. That happens. People do that. Um, Bob doesn't do that because he doesn't trade in games ever. I'm just kidding. He, he does trade in games. <laughs> and I give you game, plenty of games he does, to borrow. He does lend me games. Yeah, <laughs> that happens a lot. We don't trade, but that you don't have games. It's true, because I'm poor. <laughs> Microsoft, give me money, and I will buy your games <laughs> that I can't give to anyone. <laughs> that is the point at which I will do that. But... No, I buy games. You just don't. You don't <laughs> want to play Twisted Metal. <laughs> what the fuck, Bob? 
I think um, if we look at the numbers, no one wants to play Twisted Metal. <laughs> Zing! <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I, I lost my train of thought. I'm, I'm, <laughs> what it, it's something about trading games. Yeah, I... On one hand, I can't lend a friend a game. I can't trade games with them. I can't sell a game to another individual for money dollars. Yeah. And then on top of all of this, GameStop... I mean, I'm not a GameStop empathizer. I have problems with some of the things that GameStop does. Some. Not as many as most people, but something. They have reduced profit margins for absolutely no reason other than a company has decided that they do not want to allow property to function as property. Right. And they, it's just not, wanted to, they just wanted to cut in on the pie. That's yeah. all that was. Because, I mean, for some reason, GameStop is eating it. I don't know. GameStop doesn't have a choice, and they're terrified that the Xbox One is going to be a hit. Because Microsoft is right. talking big, and if GameStop had a fucking pair of balls and a spine, they would probably just go, we're not going to carry the Xbox One. Oops. <laughs> like, that would be an ideal situation, I think, for the industry as a whole, if they just said, we're not going to fucking carry the Xbox One because they are screwing us. It'd be funny. Yeah, I would. I would Watch get behind two companies that. I hate bitch fight each other. <laughs> yeah, it'd be fantastic. I mean, with the PlayStation, uh, what was the PlayStation Portable successor called? That weird. The Vita. No, the the, the thing with built-in RAM or storage that you installed games onto that slid. Oh, Go the, PSP oh, Go. Oh, the Go. Yeah, I see, forgot about the Go. See, yeah, everyone did except for me because I keep going. Maybe if I hack it. <laughs> <laughs> But, by the way, I don't pirate games, but I keep looking at the PSP going and going, I could play Ridge Racer 2. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, isn't it called Ridge Racers? It's yeah, it's called Ridge Racers 2. Oh, yes, then we were afraid they were going to come out with the Ridge Racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't come out with Ridge Racers 2 here, so there was no Ridge Racist. No, a lot. But, but what I was going to say is, uh, retailers carried that, but it was a much more expensive piece of kit for them to have the margins to incentivize them carrying that. Right, because you couldn't buy games anymore. So right. They, and there yeah. were still accessories. Now, that would be okay, guess, as a trade for GameStop of like, yeah, well, we'll carry your fucking thing that screws our profit margins, but we need some nice profit margins on this device, and otherwise you can go fuck yourselves. I don't know, I just, I wouldn't be sad if GameStop died. <laughs> I probably would, because a lot of, a lot of our, like, in the, in the 90s, you could go to yard sales and find games. Gaming was very popular in the late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. and, you know, parents bought their kids games and then yard sailed it and whatever. There was a lot of that. You don't see that as often anymore for the last generation. Um, so when you want to go and see what you can get for cheap for your PS3 or whatever, yeah, and GameStop's a good place to go. Like, I buy... I found that Game Center game at GameStop for the DS, and that was fucking awesome. I mm -hmm. paid like $4. Amazon's amazing, and I buy tons of shit through them, but I don't want GameStop to go away just because I can do that at a GameStop. Yeah. Right. And I have to imagine the infrastructure for doing something like this, uh, this trading in digital rights at a GameStop. That's going to be a mess. Yeah, like yeah. they're trying to talk about how we do digital used games, and everybody's got a different idea. But honestly, it, it all feels like a really awkward ad adolescence before we completely switch over to something else. Right? Yeah. What was? I mean, the only way they could do it is literally having mm -hmm. some way to sync up a Xbox Live account with a GameStop membership. There are two ways to do this that they'll go with. Either it's going to be classic PC. Of here's this 16 character thing. You 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 want to trade in your game? Do you have your 16 character passcode thing for your game? Well then fuck you. Or two, and though I haven't seen patent for this, but this exists, a specific part of the Blu-ray disc is written to have a code on it, so that way each disc is unique, and then that code correlates. Yeah, they already said it's gonna have that 16-digit code thing, because you have to put in the code to start playing the game. 
But I'm saying for when you trade it in, because that, that code's like a one-time use code like we see on the online passes and stuff. That thing's just dead after you use it. But they could refresh it. They could have an infrastructure in place of he deactivated it. Oh my it. god, just keeping that's, track of... Oh, yeah, oh. that's probably but, where they're headed because they didn't write it to the fucking disk. I thought I heard somebody saying something like you were saying about encoding a specific part of the disk. I thought they were talking about marrying a disk to the console and activating it on that console. That's what they made it sound like, but then Phil Harrison said like word for word, There'll be a code you put yeah. in. You hook the internet when you turn it on, and you put in the code. I was like, oh, I forgot, God. I forgot. Phil Are, we're, said just, that. we're straight up on PC 90s edition. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Which itself was some bizarre DRM we came up with to deal with piracy. Mm -hmm. It didn't make for the best user experience. Hell, it only sounds like the PS4 actually cares about the user experience because it has a dedicated part of the system where when you insert your Blu ray, it'll start spooling the data from the Blu-ray into the hard drive. So the game, past like the first minute of you playing it, will be able to play really smoothly, and load times will be really short. Meanwhile, in the Xbox One, you have to install the entire thing and activate the disc online through the thing. That's not a clean... Yeah, that's... I always kind of like putting in 16-digit codes. That's I would not that's want to sick. do that for every game ever. I find it annoying when yeah, they pack no, games. Not, not for every game ever. No. Yeah, I mean, packing games with downloadable content that you get for pre-ordering and that stuff is a nuisance. I also want every time I turn a game on for it not to waste about a minute of my life going checking for online updates. No, I just want to play the fucking game. Yeah, which is another thing they talked about with the PS4 that they didn't talk about with the, the Xbox One. I keep wanting to call it 362. Yeah. You know what? I'm doing it. 362. Fuck it. <laughs> Or 361. Uh, <laughs> but th that's another thing they didn't talk about, how they were going to make that so much better. And that's the number one reason why I found the PS4 unveil a shitload, infinitely better than the Xbox One. They're like, here are these things that matter to you and how we're going to make them better. The games are going to be fucking gorgeous. This controller is cool and neat and stuff, and it has retarded shit on it. Oh, fucking, yeah, the, everybody's pissed about the share button. The 360 controller looks, looks kind of sexy. Okay, it the does. 360 controller looks fucking baller. Um... But I actually have no problem with the share button. I don't understand people having yeah, a problem it, with that share button. If it's the useless fact to you, exists, whatever. pisses them off. I know, like, yeah. I'm not going to use but it. The well, light shut up. But the light bar is the only thing I actually find, like, as someone who's not going to use it, might be like, what the fuck? Because it's probably going to be pretty damn bright. Right. It is I don't want every room to be lit by hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sort of, that's the only thing that's sort of like, uh, that's a retarded thing. But I understand why it's there. I regret the fact it has to always be on. Um, but that's that's neither here nor there. My point here was that the PS4 unveil had these things like the we're going to live update games with this dedicated processor to make getting into the game more fun and more enjoyable. We're going to have this processor in a low uh, power state mode so that way overnight it can update your games automatically. Nice. It can download new content. Speaking of someone who once again lives in an area with shit internet, that would be really, really awesome. Yeah. And then that the spend mode they talked about of actually you can yeah. just start right where you, you left off. You hit the power yeah. button, boom, you're there. These are things that fucking matter to me. Mm -hmm. And I think... That's why the PS4 unveil was pretty goddamn <laughs> now, awesome. I, do they matter to you because you're a Sony fanboy? Or are you a Sony fanboy because these things matter to you? I am a Sony fanboy <laughs> because I don't have an unlimited disposable income to buy every fucking console. Which inherently to some people, I guess, makes me a Sony fanboy. You all heard it. If he could, he'd buy an N-Gage. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I... Oh, fuck. <laughs> no, really, I wanted... I'm, I'm I out wanted of my depth an, now. I wanted an end gauge. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> it was... I thought it was really cool. That's <laughs> something that uh, we were talking about, how Sony mentioned having that data spooling thing for... Yeah. And so, I... When people on Kotaku in the message boards just make the assumption that Microsoft has that. Jesus Christ! That's hilarious. That took a shitload of engineering and a dedicated processor. You can't just... <laughs> automatically be like, well, Microsoft makes OSs, of course it'll do that. Yeah, because yeah. he was like, what they should have done is throw a game in there and had it installed while he was playing it, and I was like, they, they can't do that. They didn't say they could do that. Why do you think they could do that? This is <laughs> what I love about the console war. When uh, d down, down in the ranks, on the forums, <laughs> in the pit, taking all comers, <laughs> there is no end to the ignorance there's yeah. no end no, to the no. stupidity. You no. can you can argue and yell and kill for days, and there will be no fewer. Yeah, they, they like 
the super hardcore fanboys won't listen to reason. They won't believe no matter which hard side facts. they're on. Yeah. No matter which side yeah, they're on. It's not, I, it's not limited. I mean, I know somebody, Phil Robbins, who is a complete <laughs> fucking Sony fanboy. No matter how many times I explain to him, like, no, 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 Phil, Sony shitbags sometimes too. Yeah, they they own some <laughs> shitty things. But I mean, like, the, the best part about it is, it, it should be easier in the console wars, like as, as opposed to political debate or, or or religious or philosophical debate. Yeah. Because there are concrete facts that we can point at. No, that computing system doesn't do that thing you're saying. <laughs> right, or no, that isn't as pretty. You shit back. And just, they still, will, well, that's not whatever. <laughs> I love it. I, yeah, I don't. Uh, I, I, well, I, I don't interact with it. We'll see. There you I'm go. I'm like one of those people, like you know, the, the the battle of Bull Run. I'm like I'm on the hill with the picnic. Like man, everybody's killing each other. <laughs> <laughs> Sandwich is so fucking awesome. I haven't been Pimento. on a forum in like ten years. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I unfortunately do that thing where I read comments after every article so I can oh, feel no. out. Yeah, I, see I where see where out things are, but where oh retarded people are, and no, yeah. but every time you put your toe in the water, there's still a piranha in there. <laughs> Yeah. Regardless of the temperature, there are teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm absolutely dismayed by the amount of people who think everything that Sony announced that Xbox did and the Xbox will do. And, and then it's vice even, versa, because they think everything Microsoft said they do, Sony's going to do. All the, but only when it's the bad things. Only the bad things, you're right. right. Um, now, this is the one that really bugs me, and I touched on it earlier. Remote play. For some reason, by some alleged source like they don't have an actual name to give just someone close to the xbox it's going to be able to do the remote play and i mentioned it was in a wired connect no that is really complicated sony put way too many engineers on doing it on the ps3 they didn't mention that the conference chances are it's not gonna work Mm -hmm. remote play on what games no 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 no, on what device on another xbox one why well, so, so someone on you, Skype can play your game. Because they're better at it than you are. Because oh. they're going to help you through a part. Now, oh, that they, they saw that part of the Sony conference and they thought yeah. they could do it Which, too? Now, yeah. I, I need to make sure about something with this technology. Yeah. Um, is it 1998? No. Okay, then if your game is too hard, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Basically. Have you have you heard about that huge trend of the Wii U images of the communities oh, the around Metroid? retro game? I thought it's those like were tons like, of them. I thought this was a weird joke on Tumblr that I missed. Mm-hmm. And then then I dug into it, I'm like, oh, these are actual use Oh Jesus. Yeah, no, fucking uh, I, I it's not just, they're trolling. It's not just Super Metroid. No, there are too many. Oh no. There's a there's a Twitter account for it now. That's how nice. that's how huge this is. Um fucking super mario world there's this guy standing at a certain point on the map and he goes uh what do i do now <laughs> <laughs> apparently no one who's playing super metroid knows how to like push all the buttons yeah push all the fucking buttons if that doesn't work start with two button combinations this is how we roll literally this is how we turn into a tiny ball <laughs> and we roll <laughs> yeah it's really depressing just that sort of thing of like no yeah people try harder. can no longer like, if it's too hard, they take it back because they didn't like it. Yeah, and you would know. You work at the game store. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Which, honestly, I, I love playing games that are, are fun and, like, infamous. Yeah. Loved it. Not the hardest game in the world. No, 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 no. I love the shit out of the Ratchet and Clank series. Not it's the not hardest. really hard. Yeah. It doesn't have to keep me engaged. It's a lot of fun. But every now and then, I love a game to beat my ass. And I'm not yeah. one of those guys still wearing, like, the Mario one-up wristband going, every game ever needs to be as hard as goddamn Ghost and Goblins. But can, can right. we can just, can we, I know it's really hard to ch- change difficulty settings on a, a lot more complicated modern games, but I just, the the trend with every game being a face roll is kind of, I mean, and I, I do love seeing the story. I love seeing the events. I, I honestly, I don't play games specifically for the challenge, but I do like them to be around. <laughs> Now, I don't know if a certain somebody has made it this far in the podcast, so I don't know if they know I'm immediately talking about them, and I'm very interested in whether or not you are still listening. But I'm going to say that somebody out there who is a Gigaboots fan keeps alleging that the reason games are easier now is because our taste has changed, which is completely horseshit. Games are easier now because we are making them as disposable content so we can roll them into the DLC and the sequels. All of them are doing this because it's easy to make the prettiest hallway as long as you make it a hallway. And you want to make sure they see the entire hallway, otherwise your game gets a bad score. So you make it easy, you make it fake hard, fake intelligent, 
a large part of game design is actually convincing somebody that you haven't walked them through something directly, but intelligently setting it up so that way they have done something and they feel good about themselves. Which yeah, I think I that's something that sometimes. I appreciate that because the alternative is them walking me through it deliberately. Like, like every Apparently, now and then, I'll, because I'll be doing no... that in the game and I'll like get really into it and I'll pull off something amazing, but it'll like it, that'll put me behind the curtain. And, like, the event just keeps happening while I'm standing there. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> was, uh, Portal 2 got kind of killed by that, I think. Because there's always, it's walking you through, but not actually walking you through. Yeah. Whereas Portal 1 was just, yeah, these puzzles are going to get hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, in, in the middle of Portal 2, I'm like, I'm really happy I'm playing this. I'm enjoying the story a lot. I really wish there were puzzles in this. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's, that's sort of my problem with Portal 2. That, and I disagree with a lot of the puzzle elements they added. Like, I, I feel they didn't quite hit the spot. And, and yeah, light tunnels, light bridges. Fuck yes. The gels? Yeah. I, I feel was the a gel fan. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I felt the gels really just reduced every puzzle to find a way to put this gel on everything. Well, no, the problem was all the puzzles were reduced to find a way to put this gel on everything. Yeah. Right. So, so I guess gels puzzle, in, in innately aren't bad. <laughs> I haven't seen gels pull off X. Well, actually, no. I played a couple online maps that were hmm. pretty excellent. But we are really off topic. Yes, we yeah. are. This is Portal 2 now. So the uh, triggers on the Xbox One controller having uh, dedicated rumble in them is... Uh, that sounds really cool. I love that idea so much. Like yeah. That reminds me of Time Crisis controller. I got, Time Crisis controller is best controller. I got best really controller. sad when I'm like, oh, that's really awesome. Oh, the PS4 controller's not going to do that, is it? No. Yeah, and it's oh. we. It's kind of sad that Sony's controller is sort of the epitome of Sony. It's doing so many things <laughs> instead of doing things super awesomely, like a limited set of things, super awesomely. It's doing a lot of things. This isn't to say that the PS4 controller isn't leaps and bounds better than the PS3. Holy shit, is that thing going to be better? Yeah. I'm not sure you knew this and probably our audience doesn't uh the ps4 controller doesn't have pressure sensitivity on the face button or the d-pads this is inherently better for developers because nobody ever programs that shit to be pressure sensitive they there, wanted there to know the game on the ps2 uh, there was the bouncer too but mm. the point is no one does that anymore because they it, it's an input it needs to be super tactile mm. we don't want it to be as vague as motion controls we want it to be on or off yeah and what they've done is made the d-pad a lot more responsive by doing that that's why the vita's d-pad is kind of better than the ps3s because it is clicky it is very responsive and it is curved deliciously and the ps4 d-pad is all of this and more nice just there's so many things they've improved about the controller and various other things they reduce the latency much like the xbox one did which mm. thank you guys thank you so goddamn much the yeah. more we reduce that latency the closer we get to removing all this latency you fuckers added in games <laughs> in the last eight years <laughs> I remember when, when when I first saw uh, a picture of the Xbox One, I'm like, oh, Xbox revealed that. Oh, they fixed the D-pad. Right? <laughs> yeah, because that was the very first noticeable thing about that. Yeah. As is a real D-pad on that controller mm. now. Thank God. Those, uh, yeah, I hear it's like a good mechanical click on the D-pad. Uh, th th those sticks are sexy. Yeah. Yeah. They oh, are. my God. Those I, are awesome sauce sticks. Oh. I'm glad Sony improved the sticks, but those sticks still aren't as awesome sauce as the, as the Microsoft yeah. ones. Yeah. The only only downside <laughs> to this thing seems to be it still uses double A's. Yeah. Mm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I thought I heard it was going to be retardable from the console. Yeah. I thought I heard that too, but... I mean, I I'm almost certain I read this. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. You know what? You guys keep talking about stuff. I'm going to look this up. Because <laughs> maybe maybe I'll just see. Yeah. Like, like, maybe I'm talking about they recess the battery pack. And I know there is a battery version. But I, I think there might also be. Well, there's always been the option to go get the recharge pack. But everyone hates the recharge pack because it dies within two years. Oh. Which is sad. Yeah, that that's suck. It's honestly the worst recharge pack I've seen. Now, I've heard a couple people talk about how they don't like the, uh, the, 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 the new bumpers, the top buttons. They look weird, but yeah, I don't like they're know. They're a lot bigger. I, I don't know if they'll... It's one of those things that I have to get my hands on. Right. Yeah, yeah it like, still uses double A's. Okay. Mm. That's fucking horrible. Right? Yeah. I mean, they reduced the... It's kind of like cheating. We reduced the price of the controller compared to our competitor and packed in all this awesome shit because you have to buy shit separately. <laughs> <laughs> so is that, that recharge pack going to be $15 or $20? Yeah, I don't know. This time. I don't know. It could it could be twenty. It just just be heinous, right? I, I, I oh, people don't buy them anyway. They don't see the the uh, 
need for not changing batteries every every week. <laughs> yep. That's what a lot of what the uh, the marketing to Xbox community seems to have been. They just fleece them for money in every little way they can. Yeah, I mean, that's I their model. Uh, they sell you a console that doesn't have wireless built in. Buy this 120 or 150? Yeah, 150 it was. 150 wireless receiver for your console because we didn't build that into the system. Yeah. Wow. And then there was the HD DVD tray thing. Yeah, I remember that one. I remember the external hard drive thing. I, I didn't know about we the didn't wireless allow, thing. We aren't yeah. allowing you to transfer your game saves to USB sticks or any type of flash media. Buy this memory card separately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> buy this hard drive transfer cable. Yeah, buy this <laughs> drive, hard Why drive. Why is the PS3 so expensive? Because it came with all this shit. <laughs> yeah, that was a huge thing there. Yeah. And, and I, of course, I the think, $60 a year. Well, $50 a year and then $60 a year later on, which is like, man, why didn't people revolt? <laughs> they did. People tried to rise up against the 360 a couple. I remember when it was <laughs> out for like a month and a half, was it? Xbox Live, Xbox Live went down for several weeks. Oh, yeah, that was uh, oh, okay, a year yeah. in. That was during December. <laughs> yeah. A year in. Right? People were furious. And yet somehow in four years they completely forgot because everyone acted like the Sony thing was completely oh, yeah. unprecedented. Yeah. Everyone forgives Microsoft for everything, which is it, it's. They might forget. I, I love don't... Penny Arcade. <laughs> oh my god! Anywhere near E three, I have to stop reading their news posts. Yeah, because they just piss me the fuck off. God damn it! <laughs> like here's the thing: it's not that I have a problem with what. Th- it's not that I have a problem with the fact they're doing that for Microsoft. Mm-hmm. I have a problem with the fact they're doing that, that they're just completely forgiving of these things. It's like, no, you, you in order to be a fair reference point, to, in order to be the filter through which we view the world, that these people like them and really us as a site, as a group, need to be, we have to have a, mem- a memory that goes on as long as it possibly can. We are supposed to remember as many important things like that as we can, you know? Mm. Because otherwise we act like things are unprecedented and they're not, which is a large problem with my coverage of the the Xbox One event. Not enough people are like, I don't believe any of that horseshit. (laughs) Um, Which I'm not saying it's as bad as Sony 2005. Nothing is as bad (laughs) as Sony 2005. Oh God, 2005 was amazing. (laughs) It was amazing because that was that was like 2005 to to November 2006. November 2006 is basically when I lost my virginity. <laughs> when I became an adult. It was when disappointment became a part of my personality permanently and forever. <laughs> oh god, and then how many years ago was it? Like fucking I'm sitting there with Tony Hawk on the fucking PS3 and I'm like yeah time to or actually it was resistance and I hit the P- PlayStation button and it doesn't fucking jump out to the main menu and I'm like it's not worth why is it bringing up this menu why is it not jumping out to the main menu why is it not doing this they said it would do this they showed me it doing this mm-hmm. why isn't it what 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 we just we, we waited weeks for every update to bring us another feature they said it was gonna have at launch and then how, how long in till we got wallpapers <laughs> Fucking a retarded amount, which was weird because we had PSPs and those had wallpapers. Right. Fucking, um, when did we get seven people video chatting while playing a game in Windows? When did that happen? Oh. Does anyone, can anyone tell me when that passed? <laughs> it's called the PlayStation 4. Oh. <laughs> well, then I'll buy that. <laughs> and that doesn't support seven videos at once. This goes along oh. with my theory that, um, Jack Trenton is a time traveler, and he just had the wrong speech notes. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Trenton wasn't at that one. <laughs> then exactly, <laughs> then, <laughs> he became Ken Kuragi when he leaped into the time port. portal. Portal, portal, portal. Um, so, are, are we good? Closing comments? Oh wait, no. We we uh, we'll do really quickly closing comments because this is getting long. Um, and then we're going to do predictions, okay? Mm-hmm. So, closing comments on the Xbox One reveal and not necessarily the meeting because fuck giving them a grade on the meeting. We already did that through our comments. A uh, grade on the platform, the Xbox One, in your opinion. Um, just all the stuff you know. Honestly, it's it, it's too early to have any truth yet. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Microsoft made a new console. That's all I've got. <laughs> okay, Bob? Unfortunately, yeah, they didn't give us anything like i all i know is the tv box that plays three games okay um 
so no, I'm not buying it if that's what you're asking. <laughs> I'm like, just asking an assessment, not, um, not an assessment so, of, of how they performed on their presentation is well, no. a freaking failure. Right, everyone they, I mean, knows that's, that. Like, they fell on their face. Hashtag can tell you that. Just <laughs> hashtag Xbox reveal. Um, okay, here's my assessment. The camera always has to be on. It has to be connected to the internet once a day, and they have a patent to tell me whether or not I can have more than four people watch a movie. It has TV features I don't care about. A good bit of the budget of the cost of the hardware has been designated for that. There are all these features that don't seemingly make video games better. And though that controller is awesome sauce, I no, I am nowhere near the level I would have to be to buy that even if I did have disposable a large amount of disposable income. Because I could just buy a Wii U and at least that's getting Bayonetta 2. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> If we're going to, I mean, just that DRM thing, that's enough to make me not buy it. Buy it. That being yeah, you know, after the hook there to. every 24 hours is insane. Like, what if this happens? Well, this will be great when this goes out on Christmas. Yeah, I mean, I it, mean, that will the, be the, the masterpiece of Microsoft just doing it right. Right. I mean, <laughs> there was a huge fiasco when the PlayStation Network then went down and all those Capcom downloadable titles with the DRM where it has to be connected to the PlayStation Network to even boot up. Mm -hmm. Like, that was a huge shit fit. God help them if this thing goes offline. I mean, look at SimCity. Yeah. That was... I mean, I'm not signing up for SimCity, the console. Yeah. It, it obviously isn't always online like that, but it's it's always online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I'm not saying it's always online, Fine. but it's always, it's always online. online. I finally saw, saw that show. Ancient Aliens? Hmm. Yes. He isn't awful enough in every moment of every episode to w make it worth watching. Like, I'm always disappointed when he isn't that level of that picture oh everyone has God, of him. that fucking guy. Yeah, that guy's a shitbag, but... He's he's second generation shitbag down from Eric Von Daniken. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I'm um, like, do we end the podcast on him explaining who that is? No, we end the we we we, uh, we end the podcast on. I really hope uh, the first time someone is able to hack the PS4, it's like, oh my god, what game are they pirating? No, they just they got the Xbox One controller working on it. <laughs> that would be marvelous, and we eventually got that working this gen, but it's a pretty expensive solution. Hmm. How much was that? Do you I remember? Have no idea. Okay, that was. Yeah, I was like, oh, it costs money dollars, a substantial amount? No, thank you. I feel kind of bad because in my mind, like, I, I have parity between the setup uh, of, of Sony's controller and Microsoft's. And I look at it, I know the 360 controller is clearly better designed, but I have been playing on Sony's DualShock setup my entire life. Hmm. So. Yeah, I'm just really glad they improved the design of the controller this time around instead of kowtowing to everyone who's like, Boomerang controller, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty pissed when, uh, when they canceled the boomerang mm -hmm. not because not because i assume everything that's different is better i i thought the elongated handles and a lot of the things it did was an improved design over the ps2's controller if they made it more ergonomic i, I would agree with you but that thing looked huge no it was tiny check out pictures it's right. really tiny in fact that was my concern that it was too <laughs> small like it's, yeah I, I always had an image in my head of that thing being huge Oh. I thought it was next to the PlayStation 3 and just, like, it dwarfed it. No. <laughs> no. It, it it basically is cutting off the upper left and upper right corner of a PS3 controller. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that was my major concern. But I still think the angle of the handles, which you'll see on the, you know, P, on the PS4 and the Xbox One controller, it's that exact angle of, like, this is comfortable for who man hands. Yeah. I like that uh, now they've elongated the handles and not made it super ugly. I think yeah. that's what really killed people on the boomerang. It, yeah, it yeah. is ugly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people yeah, thought that, that was That was an ugly, ugly fucking thing. <laughs> that was like, does this just design sketches from, like, your coffee table? I don't... <laughs> it was funny. It was like, and here's the controller. Everybody's like, <sighs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. Okay, uh, predictions. predictions. Um, I I'll go first. My prediction. <laughs> I love doing this. Okay, much like the moment where where people found out, wait, Battlefield Four is not going to be on the Wii U. <laughs> what? That's gonna happen. That's gonna happen again. That was the thing. Did you guys not read those articles? It fucking blew my mind. I'm like, no, shit. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So in any case, we're gonna have another one of those moments for E3 where everyone is astonished that the Xbox One isn't as pretty as the PS4. They're going to be stupefied. Like, I don't understand. Why is that not as pretty? 
Like, it doesn't occur to them that that's a cost wow. of adding all these features. You have a lot more faith in mankind than I do. Because that's not going to be the reaction. Oh, the no. reaction's going to be it's a lot prettier than the PS4. <laughs> no, see, people are going to realize, not everyone, but there's going to be a huge amount of people, like, let's say 75% of the people see that conference and then look at Killzone Shadowfall and shit like that that's exclusive on Sony's side, and they're just like, that is retardedly pretty compared to this. What happened? Hell, if the same game shows up at both, that alone will sort of ha just hammer it in. Mm -hmm. Um and then, of course, there's going to be the crazies. Like, there's going to be 15% who can't even fucking tell because they're fucking it's retarded. Totally kidding. That's going to be 50%. N I still think the overpowering voice of the journalists showing up are going <laughs> yeah, to notice. Yeah, this be the difference between okay. raw numbers the, and volume. Yeah, I mean, these people are going to be at both conferences. They're going to shoot from one to the other, mm -hmm. right? So... I think that's going to happen, and there's going to be those percentage who are like, and graphics don't matter. I and love how that jackknifes back and forth. I, what was it? Last year's E3, Microsoft did that wonderfully. We're like, graphics don't make the console. Games do. But let's not focus on games. Our console's super powerful. But power numbers don't make a great gaming experience. The games do. But forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> People in the audience, am I, am I am I on drugs? Honestly, like this, right this is now. getting to the level of religious rhetoric. It, it is, is that kind of blind stupidity. Which is how you know Xbox really fucked up when a great deal of the 360 owners are like, holy shit, we're going to PlayStation. Because <laughs> that's the way they phrase it. It's not like, holy shit, like, hooray. It's like, holy shit, I guess I'm buying a PlayStation. <laughs> Which, honestly, I, I think we've talked about it uh, years ago, every now and then. We'd, we'd like, what would happen if Microsoft just collapsed, if the Xbox just died? And some people I've talked to, they, uh, they're they concerned with the idea of x flooding into the PlayStation Network on online games. Yes. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, they're going to make it as bad as Xbox Live. Personally, I think there are two ways to respond to that. Right. If you just start hearing that kind of racism and thirteen-year-old trash talking, you you can just uh, you know pull together as a community and rise above it and all that gay shit. Mm -hmm. Or uh, honestly, we we can just yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's let's become as racist and thirteen-year-old awful as we can because at least it'll drown out all the Hispanics. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> The Get Loose podcast, where you tune in for information and racism. <laughs> are, are we rock jock radio DJs? <laughs> is that what we are? Is your last name Stern? Maybe. I don't know. But, no, I, I have absolutely no doubts that the PlayStation community is already that bad. Not every yeah, console I mean, came with a headset, but now they do. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Time for whenever, us to we have a, when we, whenever we have headsets on in a game in uh, Call of Duty or something. There's some they're, dude they're, listening to rap. They, they, <laughs> no, I'm some saying. guy screaming at his wife. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's true. And it then it is like, just as bad. There's fewer headsets. So okay, I, yeah, here's the thing. I played Gran, Tur <laughs> I played Gran Turismo 5 online and had eight-year-olds driving around in circles on the track talking to each other about how school was and how much this fucking sucks and this game's gay. Mm -hmm. I'm like... Where am I? <laughs> Get me out of here! I think I spent about four hours playing Uncharted 2 online with nothing but Spanish-speaking people. <laughs> then I realized that they could all speak English and they were fucking with me. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it was. It made coordinating strategies amazing. Because I don't coordinate strategies online. I don't. I just shut up and play the game. I coordinated strategies with the, that day. <laughs> huh. Um... So, yeah, I expect Sony to have a much better showing at E3, mostly because they're doing a lot more to get indies on their platform, mm -hmm. and they've made a very good point to make it super... Like, they've talked about the tools you make a PS4 game with. They talked about how easy it is to port. They said porting from PC to the PS4 is going to take weeks now, not months. Um, just all of these layers of, like, we can get shit up and running on our platform real fast. We yeah. have this Unreal Engine 4 tech demo running live, and you can see us... Fuck with the camera. Narratively, this seems to be the way it's going. The D3 uh, Sony showing will will be like they're gonna lay all the shit on the table. And go, okay, this is what we fixed. Who wants to buy a PS4? Right. Like <laughs> and Microsoft is gonna be this amazing shadow boxing tap dance. <laughs> <laughs> um. So that's that's sort of my predictions. I'm not even gonna bring up Nintendo because I expect we Nintendo don't. to come out with Nintendo games. I don't. Know. I just don't <laughs> give a shit anymore. <laughs> okay. What are, what are your predictions, Bob, for E3? 
Um, oh, for E3 yeah, specifically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whew. It's, it's going to be well, weird. Do you, do you think Microsoft's going to bring out a gangbuster, all 15 titles on the spot? I don't think they'll do that. Okay, do you think they're going to show? That would be show... amazing. <laughs> right? That'd be, a, like, if it is solid, all games, all the time there. Just like, I'm like, some white guy in a blazer. Here's 15 game trailers. <laughs> See you next year. <laughs> Like Shit, if, I might buy a controller just to give them some revenue off of that. If, yeah. if they pull like a Nintendo, whatever that year was, where it was like, oh, oh yeah, we have Donkey Kong, we have this, we have this, we have this. Yes. Oh, God, like, that was the best E3. <laughs> the weirdest part is I don't think that's even an option for Microsoft because they own so few old I know. classic like, IPs. You, you can't do it there. It's going to be a new Halo, which, like I said earlier in this podcast, I'm over. Yeah. It was Destiny coming out. Yeah, plus we played for yeah we did and that was okay that plot was retarded yeah that plot was the worst plant god comeback no it, it was worse it than got that. worse than plant god what it got way worse than plant god okay well yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah. um sony i really worry about their press conference because there's a chance it'll be really cool and we'll see a lot more games and we'll see more of infamous we'll see more of these things running i bet we will because uh people from game form have gone and seen infamous run actually that's what i played yeah. I didn't know that. That makes me giddy like a schoolgirl. For those who don't know, Infamous One was my favorite game this gen. Yeah, they're going to have... <laughs> the, apparently, the smoke powers are just one of the powers. He's going to have whole different sets of powers. And I'm like... Nice. Uh, but anyway, I'm <laughs> <laughs> but I'm worried about the conference because it might not be that much of that. There might be like a whole bunch of, well, this is what we're doing with the Vita and this is what we're doing with the PS3. Yeah. And then like, I really want to know a lot about the PlayStation 4, the console I plan to buy. Yeah. Broad strokes, they have to nail this conference. Right? I yeah. mean, they need to get past that stuff that you're obligated to do real quick. Microsoft like, is at a point of weakness and they <laughs> have to capitalize. Like, and like, yay. I hope they don't give them a huge section of their conference this year. Yeah, that would be nice. Like, Especially since EA showed let's, up at let's, the Xbox Let's do Tiger one. Woods. Let's have the whole 13 minutes of Tiger Woods. But I never understood that. I know sports games are popular, but the, this isn't the place for making a Tiger Woods. And you're done. What the fuck else do you want to know? Right? It has you move. know what it is. You it, have six others. It has move <laughs> controls. Here's a minute and a half trailer of us showing that off. Mm. Thank you. Like, that would work. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I feel the same way about the PS4. Like, I own a PS3. I own a Vita. That's cool. Talk about those games. I want to see, like, reels. Yeah, of yeah. All a the a games. little demo reel of, of the upcoming Vita stuff. Yeah. Get it out there. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Move on. I need the PS4. To me, like I grew a second dick. <laughs> you are blowing it off like, with I, your I, mouth, I, not with a gun. <laughs> I'm just hoping that that those aren't all their games from back at that uh, conference before. Oh, uh, that Drive Club, Killzone, in Infamous, and and then Watch Dogs. Deep, if you count that, right? Deep Dive, Deep Something, Deep Down, Deep Down. Yeah, the Capcom. Konami CG or Capcom CGI thing. Right. Um, yeah actually seeing something like that Dest square enix destiny. said they'd be back and we know that there's going to be a big destiny reveal yeah square enix is so. final fantasy something at this e3 yeah um but yeah i, I, I finished I, the last guardian in secret here it is the, right the something way, like that needs to happen the way i feel about this is fucking <sighs> the next gen really just like to me choice between pc xbox one or ps4 which one i'm going to invest enough money to play these things on it boils down to which one plays metal gear solid 5 but right so kojima's got to show up and yeah. be like this is the definitive version because it has six gigs of ram and runs the entire game off the hard drive yeah i was like i'd be happy if that was <laughs> yeah the well, by the end point. of this generation i was like shit am i gonna am i gonna buy an xbox next gen then i saw the xbox reveal <laughs> oh Man, that was close. That was close. <laughs> right? I had that same feeling, but like when they showed off the PS4, I sort of got the, the understanding of, oh, old Sony's dead. <laughs> oh, long, long live, live Sony. Live, long live Mark Cerny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, new Metal Gear is really important, so I hope that Kojima's not at Xbox. Like, if, yeah, if wanna... he's there, if they... But that would be mixed messages, because like they, they're obviously abandoning the, the, uh, the Japanese market, but... I yeah. know that Metal Gear is really popular everywhere. Yeah, Metal Gear is a very worldwide brand, so it would be weird if uh, it was at the Microsoft conference. 
I honestly think Sony knows how important this E3 is. Because the Vita, let's be honest, the Vita is nowhere near as important as a business operation as the PS4. Mm-hmm. Right. This E3 is the most important. So I think I think they're going to go crazy. <laughs> I hope that they see how important Kojima is, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any more comments, guys, or are we ending this? Well, I think that'll just about do it. Indeed. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh-huh. Xbox One looks like a giant DVR. I just had to get that joke in there so we can have our internet correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. It does look like a DVR. Yeah. It also looks like a Betamax player. I forget what that joke was. I was, uh, it was Grand Theft Auto V on a VHS. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. That's not nowhere near as classy. <laughs> there was the actual, did you hear about Shuhei Yoshida's tweet? Hmm. Somebody tweeted him, and I'm going to show Agro. What do you think of the Xbox One, Shuhei? Hi, Jim. Sorry, I was back to sleep. You asked about the HTC One. 